This is a HeadGum Podcast. This week on the program, hop in your spaceship and blast off to Stupid City, because on this episode, we're talking about Moonfall. I'm Andrew Jupin. I am a swarm of bullshit, Stephen Zadak. Uh, Eric <laughs> Fall. <laughs> Chris Cabin. And we hate movies. <laughs> Fine program. A uh, happy new year to you all. It's, it's, uh, no, not you. Not you. <laughs> what? What? It's not for you. the others. For, no, it's the for gentle the listener. Audience. Oh. First audience. First of all, we, we rang in the new year together, so we said that's happy right. new year already. That's, that's, right. Right. That's, that's right. That's true. Thanks for the kiss, by the way. No problem. Uh, anytime. Yeah. Oh, whoa, double kiss. Uh, <laughs> you cheated on me, Eric? Eric? Uh, Ooh, oops. I never... get, things get sticky in the clubhouse. I God, forgot. I'm kissing you. and telling over here. What am I doing? <laughs> Let it all go. Uh, as uh, it is the new year, of course, that means here at We Hate Movies, we are talking about some of the worst of last year. And boy, did we have our pick. That was for sure. Uh, so if throughout this month, when we get to the end of the month, rather, if you're like, well, what about bleh? Listen, there's only a few uh, Tuesdays in this month, and there were a shit ton of bad movies last year, one of which is indeed Roland Emmerich's Moonfall. This motherfucker, no stranger to We Hate Movies. No, no. He's, he's a favorite, if you if if you will. We And there's plenty of stuff we haven't even gone to. We haven't even gone to fake Shakespeare yet. And oh, uh, right. one day we will have to figure that out. But this is, this I think is uh, emblematic of his problem, which is too many people are talking. Mm. Uh, when less people are talking, better movie with Roland Emmerich. I'd say Stargate. Uh, right. You don't have it's a lot of like growling and just grunting and sure like, and space language that we don't really know like half Egyptian kinda I guess but like that I I watched ten thousand B C this morning oh, <laughs> what are you doing dude uh, turned <laughs> it question. off turned it off about an hour in but really? it, oh, wow. it, but it does work more than most of his movies again because not many people are talking. It's when the people start talking that the problem I, it I, happens. I think you're onto something because 2012, I think, had also 2012 cast yes, members. Yes, it did. Oh, it did. definitely, and absolutely, it did. was too much. And this is trying to. I I feel that little, you know, flares of Independence Day throughout this, but yes. it's yes. not connecting. No, no, it's more 2012 than Independence Day, and I guess Independence Day is the one exception because you have that cast. I, you, you, have, you know what? You need Devlin. You need that Dean Devlin also, to help yes, everybody right. else Absolutely. out here. Yeah. Somebody who knows how to. Not that that guy's a fucking genius, but he makes Roland Emmerich look like a fucking genius. I mean, he, <laughs> kind of, he made his career right because yeah. he, they teamed up for Universal Soldier, and the rest is history. That's when he yep. really got a, a footholding in Hollywood. Also, Universal Soldier, two people who can barely talk. <laughs> like yep, that, it's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> I mean, I guess my thing with this movie is, you know, he, he's done. You know, this is like his umpteenth disaster movie and this is the one he as a visualist has the least idea how to show you like i don't know what a moonfall is and i still don't know like don't you know what i mean like does. No, no exactly like when the moon is falling they keep being like that's ah, really bad out there i'm like well is there even society left like the moon is a is like no. a mile away and like, no. i mean that's society bad? no that's i mean they they try to do that with the fucking hillbillies yes. like hunting the family <laughs> at the end which yeah. is more fucking that, hilarious <laughs> more oh yeah that. i need that Dude, whole that hillbilly man. would be the functional head of the united states at that point you know yes, what i mean because right. nobody else is giving orders well you know what I, I would like to have a beer with him at least so yeah, yeah that's true he's definitely a state representative <laughs> at this point and like yeah, it's oh, as I said before we started here. It's more of a a, a moon scrape, a moon uh, brush, if you will. Mm -hmm. Like it's well, just. I mean, job. I guess, I guess, yes, just like barely making contact, but most of the fuck up is happening just in that they're barely making contact. Right. Can it's I just throw out another possibility yeah. of a thing that we could call this though? <laughs> a sure. ribbing, by the way. Yeah, it's a ribbing. <laughs> yeah. It's like it just the moon it's comes a, down a little, rims the Earth's mm, little uh, cheek there. Yes, you know, a lunar sure. ribbing. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I get all that, but like they, they show like the little, you know, 
uh, design, or not the design, like the path that the moon is on, right? And it's like swirling around the earth and it's getting closer to the planet. Mm. And that's moon not path. so much of a, f- a fall as there's like a moon flush. You know what I mean? Like, God, it's yeah. just and that like we're getting smaller and smaller, just like the water when you flush a toilet. It's yes, perfect because the moon controls the tides and the, the toilet is like the tides of my house. <laughs> that's right. The tides of my ass, at least. The moon is being flushed. Oh no! Where, it's the chud and we're the hole. <laughs> yes, I like this a lot. Oh, I like that the, this movie holes. starts with uh, there's a there's an alternate Lionsgate opening that includes like real space footage, as if this movie is saying like, yeah, this is possible. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, like, like yeah, this is possible. Can I say just there's a thing though? Like, I only saw this movie today. And I think I I maybe saw a preview for it, but I think they kept this hidden just to get it out of the way so we can talk a little more freely about the movie right away. Like, sure. I thought this was just going to be like a straight up disaster movie. And this is a daggum fucking ancient aliens movie. Oh, it yeah. is. Oh, it did yeah, not see that from the advertising. No, no, you didn't, because I, I think people would have lost their shit a little bit. Uh, the I, I think people are a little amped up about all the like, oh, all those people who are saying the moon is fake and the moon landings are fake and conspiracy this, conspiracy that. I think if you front load that, people aren't as interested as Patrick Wilson's around and we're blowing shit up. Well, what That's a great nice. idea. <laughs> what a great idea, Chris, the year 2020. You know what our hero is going to be? A plucky conspiracy theorist yep. that oh, loves yeah. Elon <laughs> Musk and absolutely uh, doesn't believe the moon well, uh, landing was real. Uh, has some interesting things to, th- to say about he's, he's forwarding some uh, Jewish documentaries on Amazon you don't want to know about. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Just, he, a lot of people, a, a lot of basketball players are coming to his defense. <laughs> That's right. Yep. <laughs> No, but hang on a second. That's not the Patrick Wilson character. Dude. No, it's that, not. That's this disgraced fucking KC Houseman mm-hmm. incel basement dweller pretending to have a PhD but he, in something. He's almost, if not the, like, I mean, we start with Patrick Wilson. We sort of end with Patrick Wilson. But, like, it is Casey's journey for the most part. He's a hero. Yes. He's he's a he hero. makes the ultimate sacrifice at the end of this movie. He yes. pulls the Bruce Willis <laughs> yes. on Ben Affleck. He does. Well, well that's, I mean, we, we, we were talking about it in chat before, is it, he does have the Samwise Genji role here. Yeah. And there are people who say that Lord of the Rings is Sam's story. Sure. Like, yeah. it, there are people who argue that, especially since the way it ends, the way it ends. But, like, this one, it is like, yes, he thinks... It's a mega structure. It's, you understand, it's a mega structure up there in the moon. And then <laughs> that's... That half, and then the second part is indeed, he is constantly being like, oh, Elon, oh, e- Elon, if I could just smell your breath and, <laughs> oh, and uh, take a hair from your head and worship it every day. Like, so oh. you're saying, Chris, that this guy is one of these losers that we have now that's paying $8 a month for a blue Oh, check? he absolutely oh, is. <laughs> you, said, you said take hair from Elon, said you mean hair plug, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it. they're, it's in Stop his head Stop pulling still. out my hair plugs, <laughs> pedophile. <laughs> I oh, you it. think? Oh, you think the moon is fake? You are not pedophile. You are best friend. Thank you. Anyone who says the moon is real, that account has been banned. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's gone off the deep end. It'd be cool if he became like a flat earther or something. I mean, it wouldn't oh, shock yeah. me at all. No, it'd also be cool if he pulled a Bud Dwyer on a fucking live stream. Oh, so, I would <laughs> love that. I would adore so, this. Some yeah, lunatic so. account would be like, the moon is fucking fake and all the Jews are doing it. And then like Elon would just reply, exactly. <laughs> oh, no. The, the one that I love, though, dude, his fucking one word answers is interesting <laughs> oh man <laughs> fuck you dude <laughs> fascinating point you make there it's possible that yes indeed inside the moon it is a bunch of whirly thingies it's a bunch of whirly bombs it is possible that Jewish people are just goblins inside of large human suits <laughs> you're right interesting exactly <laughs> Oh yeah, you know, yeah, he's from apartheid South Africa. He probably yeah. doesn't have it all together upstairs. I, also, I like you say apartheid South Africa as if it's a place. Yeah. <laughs> sure, no, yeah. Yeah. that was—I mean, that was the capital was. of South and, Africa when he was around, and it will be again, Steve. <laughs> mm-hmm. if oh Musk yes, has way. oh yes, you believe that uh, Ridley Scott film Legend is actual historically accurate? <laughs> mm, interesting. <laughs> I, I, I I agree with you. Oh, I don't know. You're saying Lord of the Rings is all Samwise's story. Must be pedophile. <laughs> Must be. 
Uh, yeah, so we start. Yeah, it's like you know, uh, we get the, some moon footage, some moon landing footage, or do or do we? Uh-huh. Um, 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 and then we just cut to this really like you know we're trying to make Patrick Wilson a intrepid like likable schlubby astronaut guy because he's singing Toto's Africa to this other guy about yeah. a decade too late on that oh one. at least what? I mean no, people are still singing that wait song. no yeah H- hang on a second first of all this scene is taking place in 2011 and well, also oh, okay when well, the fuck yeah. was it like just in the last like four years three four years like weezer recorded that and it was like a big hit all over again that movie's never that song rather has never gone away no i, never mean, I, I, I thought that we had turned we'd all become a nation of uh rosanna of fans. snobs uh, no i want i'm more of a rosanna man okay that's just I all mean, i'm look, saying rosanna the is the better song but this one is the more remembered fair fire uh, correct 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 um but yeah 2011 patrick wilson some other dude and then halle berry in a Roland Emmerich movie. Yeah, never, never thought I'd see the, the day. mighty have has fallen. <laughs> oh yeah. For what it's Oscar worth. Oscar fall, dude. That's a that's this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, well, meanwhile, Patrick Wilson is right at home. This is Oh, exactly, yeah, this is right this, where he needs to be. <laughs> but it's perfect. so fucked up though, right? Like he's excellent. Oh yeah, he's great. I mean, I, I think he's great. He just like what what the fuck with these movies, man? Well, he I mean is, he was great in Aquaman, but that's the thing. I like him on the side in bigger movies. But yeah, uh-huh. like when he's the centerpiece, then I think he has to be a Roland Emmerich joint. It has to be a little shitty because you were probably trying to get somebody else, right? Mm. I I mean, you uh, know, uh, uh, pa- yeah. Patrick Wilson is definitely a someone has passed. Like, yes, he plays villains a lot now. Like he was in that fucking A Team movie. Obviously, Aquaman. I do oh, think boy. he's good in. Oh, is but, he the bad guy in the A Team? I believe so. Yes, he is. He's Holy in those co- shit. I mean, the Conjuring movies are huge. Actually, to be fair, at least the first oh, yeah. two. The third one is like Rrr. Insidious too. The, well, the oh, yes, it's true. Like, that was like kind movies. of his, him kind of coming back. But like, is that, am of, I remembering right? He's directing the new Insidious. I'm fucking pumped for that, man. Oh, really? I did not know. Yeah, that. yeah that's, that's interesting. Cool. But eighteen, eighteen was a decade ago. It took place a year prior to this opening. <laughs> <laughs> They're just up, up in space, and instead of singing Toto, he's just like. Hey man, uh, you see any good movies lately? They're just talking about it. <laughs> Insidious. So um, while they're doing it, like they're they're all having like a real fun time on doing some space stuff, and like we find out that Halle Berry is just married, and Patrick Wilson was at her wedding because they're best buds. There's this third guy, Marcus, who's the new guy who's not going to last mm-hmm. not not long. No, mm-hmm. because there's a huge thing of space diarrhea hits. Them. Jesus Christ! They just get <laughs> shat upon in space. And it's a it space shark. Doesn't even look good. Like I feel like all the effects in this don't really look good. Well, because the thing is, it's the it's the easy, lazy way out of being like, oh, it's nanobots, and then you just make it look like a swarm of bugs, and yeah. it's terrible, and it's terribly boring to look at. Well, it's exactly, is dust is sh- killing people. Also, but is is this? It looks almost exactly like the shitstorm that's supposed to be an actual character in Green Lantern. Yes, uh, Parallax. Thank Parallax. You. Okay, nice. yeah. How could I forget? All, I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's a better look. I mean, it's slightly better looking, I guess. But like, yeah, it's nothing face. It's it just. Looks, think about Independence Day, right? Like the whatever you think. I mean, look, obviously a lot of practical effects and a lot of CGI effects. Sure. None of that matters. The production design, like the designed ships, the designed aliens. They yeah. looked like things, and now it's just like, no, it's just a big swarm of shit that gets you, and if it gets you, you're in trouble because yep. it got you. <laughs> and everything in this movie is like blue and gray. Yep. And I don't see how that's exciting. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. Uh, so the <clears throat> excuse me the uh, the little cloud of nanobots here hits these dudes. Marcus goes flying. What do you know? Patrick has uh, Patrick Wilson has the good fortune to be whipped around right back into the space shuttle comfortably. Yeah, Marcus nice. just bumps into uh, George Clooney. Hey, man, how's it going? Oh, yeah, we're <laughs> yeah. just going to be. Get ready for the rest of your life. Just floating yeah. out here, dude. That's uh, interesting. Uh, you're not dead yet, huh? Oh, that's all right. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> just hanging out. <laughs> but Andrew, to your point about Patrick Wilson being flung right back into the ship, I think this is why NASA is just like, dude, you... You must have done this or something. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like you were fucking, we have it on the log that you were like microwaving ramen noodles like a minute after that guy died. 
<laughs> you don't have any bruises, like at all. Like, yeah. whether, like at least Haley Berry's been hit on the head. Like, at least that's something. You yeah. just, it's it's very suspicious. Patrick he should have got a wrench out, hit himself in the head. <laughs> he should oh, have. Definitely. Honestly, or he should have shot himself in the shoulder like a a, a bat, a, a shitty cop. Right. Totally. Yeah. He's like, oh, there's a, there's no way they're gonna believe that uh, I didn't cause this. <laughs> <laughs> he sprinkles some crack out there. <laughs> <laughs> There's a drug bust gone wrong on the uh, moon, dude. Of course. That's right. Uh-huh. Uh, so this this fucking turd cloud here starts drilling into the moon, uh, and you just get this <sighs> moonfall title card. And uh, of the trivia used to believe, which I do believe, this whole sequence of his son, Sonny, uh, <laughs> name, well, name, replacement name, <laughs> like, yes, absolutely. Exactly. Yep. We'll figure it out later. That's what that name <laughs> said. Okay, it's, it was originally Sonny Boy, all right? We, had, we, we changed it to just Sonny. Happy with that, all right? Do you think, well, maybe this, uh, you know, this Patrick Wilson astronaut, maybe he's like a massive Godfather fan. The kid's name is actually Santino. Oh, oh nice. Right, yeah, <laughs> they nice. Just, I mean, I, well... Yeah, I was about to say maybe Patrick Wilson's like hyper Italian in this movie, but doesn't he have like an Irish? What's his last name? Harper. Harper. Yeah. Harper. yeah. Santino Harper, huh? Okay. Ooh, yeah. Not yeah, exactly. Totally. Or like you know maybe the wife is uh, like a really you know rich Sicilian. Marissa Tomei. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, what, instead of making her a character, we, we give uh, all uh, characteristics to uh, uh, what, what, I always fuck up his name. Uh, the, 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 her step, the stepdad, Michael, uh, Michael Michael Pena. Like you don't make the wife a character at all, no. but you make him a major character. But he's a major character, but he's not really used in any no. way. He's just like a plot point. Uh, like I feel like I feel like he's underutilized. I feel like he's usually funny and affable in movies. And yes. maybe it's the writing, maybe it's the direction. I don't know. But he's just flatlining through this movie. They are. They make him like a clueless, super rich stepdad guy well i mean roland emmerich next to steven spielberg is one of our foremost uh auteurs about divorce you know what i mean he loves oh, yeah. it he loves yeah. fucking because i mean that happens in 2012 too is like the the world is ending the stepdad gets eat shit and then the mommy <laughs> and daddy get back together at the end mm-hmm. yep totally and uh, the divorce doesn't hold in uh, Jeff Goldblum's marriage and Independence Day—they're yep. clearly back together. Absolutely, the thank God the first lady gets taken out in that movie, dude. Some fucking consequence for crying <laughs> out loud. Uh, but it's kind of weird, like so, like. But this scene actually was a reshoot because people were confused because then they just jump in the original cut of the movie uh, to like you know uh, to Houseman and like and then Patrick Wilson doing the class thing and then like. People are like, well, why isn't he part of NASA no more? Uh, so they, they they put this whole like <laughs> thing where uh, he's this kid's looking at the snow globe and they're like on the television. They're like, he is no longer part of NASA no more because NASA mad at him. Goodbye, Dude, movie. Uh, <laughs> the, the cry on here is fucking hilarious. It just says disgraced hero pleads case. <laughs> what is this NASA like live feed like trial like a tribunal yeah. that like everyone yeah. is watching? Dude yeah. like I don't like you know this is like some court TV shit but for like a NASA hearing. I don't I don't think that this happens but I guess maybe is it because it's like his hometown local news or something so they're like choosing to be like hey the guy that we all know that lives on chestnut street uh, <laughs> but, total disgrace oh yeah i mean but also like the, the the world knows about that like everybody knows him to be a, a a piece of shit like the fucking i wish it was a local news story but it's not like it's just well, this, it's a, it's a I, I, disaster so i would have it's news in a way, right? Because it's like yes. we we don't go to. I mean, in 2011, we weren't going to space, right? We haven't gone to space in a long time well, since NASA itself. So well, I guess if NASA would do something, maybe it would be a story. That's my point. It's like 2011. I remember 2011. We all remember 2011. Nobody gave a shit about NASA in 2011. <laughs> nope. No, like, I mean, to the be, last to time be they fair, gave a shit about it was when the Apollo 11 movie came out. I mean, <laughs> to be fair, we send people into space all the time. We haven't been on the moon since the 1970s. But well, do, but sure, it's like SpaceX like, or something, right? Yeah. Which I know gets name chucked in no, this. No, but there's 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 NASA uh, things really? happening. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We're not uh not trying to send anyone to the moon because I'm not sure that that might might start wobbling. Then uh, <laughs> somebody takes somebody too fat gets on the moon. Moon will fall, <laughs> fall right down. <laughs> Can't have that. No, you want Jon Snow up there. No, you don't want the other guy. You want Jon Snow up there. Oh, <laughs> uh, the moon is hollow, just like my opponent's policies. <laughs> 
Oh, yes. I oh, like my that. God. This fucking movie, man. Moonfall. Holy fucking shit. Can I just <laughs> say, though, I mean, as ridiculous of a turn as this all is and whatever, can I just say, like, if it turned out to be true that we were ancestors from another race of people that, like, built these huge things to send out to other planets and, you know, ter- terraform or, you know, create planets and we're, we're seeds of those people fascinating discovery can i just i think personally that is a fascinating fucking discovery oh yeah sure Mm -hmm. i mean there's no way it's true but man i was watching this movie and i was like i don't know i mean the falling part or you know the the moon ribbing uh such as it is (laughs) you know not so great and all the mass death but just like if that was a thing we found out like we were space people like the children of the stars I don't know. Kind of cool. But, but this is the effect the movie's trying to have there because it's supposed to be like a huge twist that's like mind altering. Like, whoa. Yeah. No, but, I mean, I just remember being like, oh, now we're doing this in this movie? But All right. exactly. Too little, too late. It, it, it's too little, too late. And we're literally cutting back from these enormous moon revelations about the history of the human race yeah. Yeah. to fucking Sunny in a fucking Jeep driving around getting chased by hillbillies. Like, well, yep. I don't care about this. <laughs> Absolutely not. Once we leave Earth, like... Yes, we gotta leave Earth. It, it should not turn back because that is the fucking Achilles heel with so much of these Roland Emmerich disaster movies is the, the family element in them. Like, mm, I don't yeah. care about the human beings. I care about the gleep glops and the boom booms <laughs> and yes. the fucking explosions and the mass death of animated cartoon characters. You know what yes, I mean? Yes. Like, I mean, keep the heart heart-wrenching shit out of here uh, well also it all looks like garbage it yes. looks terrible the worst part i mean they're up in a moon structure that is completely cgi and it looks much better than what is supposed to be like realistic home views with yes. like yeah. uh, i mean it looks so fucking bad like i i wouldn't have this it, it's almost the level of tv movie shit this is the most expensive one of the most expensive independent uh, movies ever made by the way uh, oh yeah oh. and it was an enormous bomb they, they lit a lot of <laughs> They lit a lot of foreign money on fire. Oh, yeah. They they went to Cannes. They raised money for this movie. It, talk about fucking moon flush. I mean, <laughs> money flush, man. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. fucking lootly. Um, oh, the thing I was, I was going to bring up, uh, for a lot of this movie, what we're doing, we're not using green screens. We're using the new thing where we have these massive, uh, like, monitors, like LCD monitors, and we're playing whatever the graphic is, and then you're acting in front of that. That's what they did for a lot of the, uh, right, yeah. like Mando and a lot of the perch shots and the Batman are using that too. Like if you use it right, it does look pretty convincing. But the problem is you have like really lazily put together like background art that just looks like fake, fake shit. Like, you know, when you put on a, those YouTube 10 hour videos yes. of just like, a little, you know, comfy cabin room or something with the fire on and it's like loosely shittily animated. That's what this all looks like and it's a fucking 100 million dollar movie. Well, no <laughs> amount of effects is going to stop your house from being taken away from you when you drink away your oh, this uh, is great. shambling <laughs> uh, career as an astronaut. What I love uh, about this Chris is that they're trying this guy's trying to evict him from this house he rents. He yes. can't pay the rent. Yet he's living in Jay Leno's garage. Yes. <laughs> sell that car, sell a motorcycle. Like what? what, what? Yep. It seems like that's all he has. Because like he also lost the house that his wife and child were. I mean, that's before the 10 year jump, which is also like weird that it's just like, oh, yep, 10 year. Here we go. This is just uh, telling me we're paying astronauts too much. Just mm-hmm. a little too much. And it is like a big like he sneaks out the window. Like I, it's, it's, it's so fucking hack to watch the sequence of the guy, the landlord banging yeah. on the door like yeah. I need the rent right now. Oh, I'm from another country, but I'm like a landlord. Ah. Exactly. And by the way, if this were a like 1990s Roland Emmerich movie when we still had some fucking teeth in the game, uh, the movie <clears throat> when things are getting really bad would just randomly cut back to that landlord and you'd see that guy fall in a That's huge hole and die. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, that yes. definitely would happen. Right? He's yes. just like, ah, moon will not fall so long as I get rent. And he looks up, oh, no, moon, get me. <laughs> oh, wah, wah, moon, wah. <laughs> And the moon scrapes and just like pulls them out to ocean. He I do like out there. when the moon just starts sucking people up. 
you yeah, know that's great it's cool. meanwhile uh, uh we we're introduced a little bit earlier to uh, game of thrones is what's this guy's name john john bradley Samwise john bradley yes. samwise gorgy <laughs> samwell <laughs> come on come on <laughs> what, what was that Mighty. hold on a second i didn't quite <laughs> get that fully what was that the ki- the character's Gorgie? name was Samuel Tarley. Yeah, uh-huh. that's right. Not Samwise yes. Gorgy. As Gorgy. Someone, as Mr. Chris Mad Magazine Cabin has put it. Hey, look. You get your influences where you get them. Oh, man. He, yeah, he is a, a, a fucking conspiracy theorist, real dangerous, two online weirdo mm-hmm. who pretends to be a janitor so he can break into UC Irvine uh, and get, he calls into like a big, uh, you know, scientific telescope pretending to be this professor because he is independently tracking yep. the orbit of the moon is the idea. Sure. Because he believes boy, it's oh a boy. mega structure. Yeah. Dude, hearing, hearing this fucking Englishman just shout out, mega structure, everyone is not is trying as hard as they can in this movie to not say mega structure and this guy's saying it left and right yeah, yeah. he said it done it's i think also he's weird. all he's saying he, he he later we see that he's working at a fast food drive through window i've never heard an english accent come out of one of those no i mean well, no. The whole i would love it, it. I, I appreciate that they don't make him do an american accent you know what i mean like you want True. this guy because he's got the energy you want that's fine yes but then like they go through all this stuff like his mom is american for some reason and then like mm-hmm. he, there's like, some line when he's like in that hotel room with patrick wilson like well when after me dad me dad died we moved back to the states back to where my mom was from like i don't care yes. like, you really you truly in, don't give a shit you yes. throw in that one stray line like they do in schwarzenegger movies you know yes. it's like yeah I, do, I was born in austria but then i came here and i'm a cop you know <laughs> the, well yeah uh, it's supposed to be about his partnership with patrick wilson like if you want to build a buddy team they should be talking about those things. Like, I know most things are like show, don't tell, but like stuff like that, like my mom is like, it has, it doesn't remember me. Like stuff like that is stuff that would make them intimately connected. Or, or like Patrick Wilson's fucking mad at NASA as well and starts leaking shit to this That'd guy. That'd be nice. Exactly. Oh, that would be kind of cool. What's actually interesting about uh, this guy, uh, John Bradley, you know, we know him as, you know, just playing an Englishman on that Game of Thrones. Right. But what's funny is the first time you hear him speak in the movie, he is doing an American accent because he's pretending to be this doctor. Yes. Mm -hmm. And before I put that together, I was like, oh, man, they're making this guy from Game of Thrones do a fucking American accent. Why? (laughs) And then thankfully, like the very next scene, he's talking like himself. Uh, It's because nobody from uh, uh, London or Britain has ever taught at a University of California. (laughs) It's just it's never happened ever (laughs) in the history of time. So, yeah, he works at a whatever. I was surprised. I mean, I guess because uh, God, the new Godzilla snapped it up first. This guy doesn't have a podcast. Like, it would be so obvious. We're like, welcome back to my YouTube channel or whatever. Or something. Oh, right. you know? Instead, like, yeah. They have a website where he does have like a vlog of some kind. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It looks more like the Riddler's website uh, from <laughs> yeah. Batman. It's and, more and of that type. You're seeing it precisely one time. Mm, yeah. You know, like his name is not Podcast, which I know was not the Godzilla <laughs> movie, but <laughs> similar uh, idea. I just, you got to redo the script. When What's that podcast? There, the moon's in trouble. Show me, Podcast. <laughs> go. You know what, Podcast? You and I have a lot of uh, the same thoughts about Elon Musk and conspiracy theories. <laughs> nyang, nyang. Speaking of conspiracy theories, later in the movie, we do get a reference to security level Q clearance. Uh, oh, really? Oh, yeah, yes. Absolutely. That's what the NASA uh, outgoing director gives um, Halle Berry. Harpo, we've got to go to the Capitol. They're stealing it from the president. <laughs> <laughs> we got to rush the Capitol, Harpo. <laughs> Well, you know, I just got disgraced from NASA. I don't know if that's the best idea for me, right? but... <laughs> the you know, we- shaman told me we have to go to the Capitol on chance. Well, fair enough if your medicine man said it. Let's go. <laughs> Harper, we have to go, and we have to take AOC's hairbrush for, for very conspiratorial reasons. For me. <laughs> it's definitely not for whacking off. It's just for conspiratorial reasons. It's, it's very... It's, it's, it, it's for intelligence reasons. It's not for me to smelly smell while I wank. <laughs> okay, but I get first breath. <laughs> okay. I uh, don't want to come on a comb. I just need it for science reasons. <laughs> 
Harper, take this hammer and go to Nancy Pelosi's house. Jesus. He might have done it. He might have done it at that point of his life. Mm -hmm. Um, So NASA is like kind of uh, starting to figure out some readings here. Some dude's like, hey, the moon's orbital radius is decreasing. And it cuts (laughs) back and forth with Houseman like trying to figure out like how he can get in touch with NASA because we see him call at one point and it's like the yeah. NASA gift shop, har har. So he comes home and this is like the first of a couple of lines where they have this character S that dude's D, but this is where he's like, how do I call NASA? How would I call NASA? Oh, what would Elon do? And then like the joke is he goes and like talks shit on the internet and that's how he drums up oh, just worldwide like awareness. Yeah. Yes. I, I, yeah, that's smart that's move. What what they're doing? Smart move. What I mean, would Elon do? Well, first uh, he'd ask his that... mother for some more emeralds. Yes, <laughs> he would talk. He would talk to the Saudis and get some bank funds going, yeah. and then uh, they'd be right on a roll. Right and then, then tank know, his other companies as well. That yeah. Halle Berry, the head of NASA, she's just a pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica oh, Fowl, Jacinda Fowler's a pedophile. <laughs> Um, what do you, uh, he's got this, uh, he's got this cat that's named Fuzz Aldrin. Of course. That's, uh-huh. that's fun. And my Very question nice. about this for the, for the cat folks here, uh, okay. cause I've, I've never owned a cat. I'm too allergic. Um, when they're just like angrily pissing all over your house, what's going on there? That means you're not taking care of your cat yeah. at all. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Oh, I see. That litter yeah, box so has probably never been fucking cleaned. I mean, he's, he's lashing out. He probably doesn't get any attention. He's not getting played with. He's probably not being fed uh, adequately. Oh no! That's what also what Elon would do. He would ignore his loved ones. He would ignore uh, <laughs> the, the things that he was supposed to be responsible for. Is also what Elon would do. So I'm doing that. He can piss and shit everywhere he likes. When we were moving for the first time, one of my cats just looked my wife dead in the eye because it was like a, a, a weeks of like moving boxes and like everything was un- unrest for the first time in this cat's life. He just sat down on a pile of clothes that my wife was folding and pissed on him while looking at her like that. <laughs> oh my God. And he's never done that before or since, but like that's, you know, some, that is how they kind of communicate to you. Sometimes. Remind you who's in charge, you mm-hmm. know, that's well, it's I guess, a smart uh, move. Yeah. So I guess he is trying to communicate here because the cat pisses all over this newspaper clipping that this gentleman then picks up with his bare oh, hands. Oh dude. Yeah. Yikes dude. Ugh. And he's like, it's like an, a- it's like an advertisement for astronaut day at the <laughs> observatory. Yeah. And he's like, Oh, Thank you, Fuzz Aldrin, for pissing on me newspapers. Yeah. I'm not going to wash me hands. Bye, Fuzz Aldrin. Yeah, then he, he, he licks his fingers and he gets out there. <laughs> he starts talking to Patrick Wilson, who is like, <laughs> also like, it just like, I kind of would have loved it if they just went in as like, Lethal weapon style. This guy's just an alcoholic. Yes, like, exactly. Just and like explain it later what happened and everything. Like, I didn't need that little brain. I know people needed it, but like if he was just an alcoholic and be like, Yeah, well, Halle Berry kind of fucked me over. Yeah. Uh, oh, no. there's cl- there's clearly smarter ways to do it, dude. And yeah. that fucking moving scene is just for really dumb motherfuckers. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, yeah. also why uh, you don't just say what's happening at to the moon a- as we see, the moon is farting. <laughs> oh. The moon is letting off lots of streams too of much black cheese. gas. Like, mm. yes, just too much cheese, too much a lot of stuff. Also, it's got this AI bug inside it. Uh, but, like, it's funny that they're just like, oh, yeah, there's a bunch of gas uh, floating into our face. Uh, <laughs> d- 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 this is scary. <laughs> this is a scary thing that's happening. They, uh, the, the, He has this, like, uh, conference with these kids and, like, uh, uh, you know, um, Houseman gets there first, so he's like pretending to be Patrick Wilson, and he's telling them all these crazy conspiracy theories, some of which are true, or at least like people do actually believe, which is always great. You always want to encourage these people, like the so idea. Which like, ones? Are, which are? Wait, wait you're saying? The, yeah, were you the, pinning down some real ones here? You're dude? saying that what he's saying, his conspiracy theories are actually true, is what you're Ooh. saying? No, no, not not true, but are believed by people on this earth. In the they're real not just world. conspiracy theories written for the moon. Exactly. Yes. Something, something about like how the moon's distance is, is exactly three times away from the fucking sun and three times away from the whatever. Like That's all correct. that stuff is just like. And it's like, why is that, children? And it's like, I don't know, dude, just because that's how it is. Yeah, mm-hmm. but then so how does that relate back to the Jews, though, dude? <laughs> that's a great question. <laughs> well, three plus show up later. three plus three. You've got six, six, six eventually, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Mark of the Beast. Dude, sure. when you just, like, see these people online doing the fucking gymnastics 
to make this stuff work in their <laughs> head. Insane. It is it is some of the saddest shit, man. I, I mean, it's funny. Don't get me wrong. It is hilarious, but it's also like dangerously sad. Yes. Yes. I, so uh, my, my man here, uh, Casey, goes to see uh, Brian, but also... Uh, uh, conspiracy pills all these kids into believing in mega structures. And this teacher who went away to go figure out something is fired for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. She just left these kids in the middle of the Griffith Observatory or whatever. Like, what did you learn today, Billy? Well, we learned that the Earth was flat. Actually, <laughs> we learned about Jewish space lasers. And the, <laughs> the moon is the Death Star, and it's crazy the restraint to not quote any of those lines from Star Wars. <laughs> Absolutely. I was, Ma- you ahead. also get the one kid who's like Jason Reitman from uh, Ghostbusters 2 is like, yeah, you're from you're full of crap. You're just don't, <laughs> you're, you're an astronaut. You're full of crap. <clears throat> no, you don't look like an astronaut. You're full of crap. That's his whole thing. Because yeah. you're. You're because you're a big fat guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> you don't look like an astronaut. And I love his line. He goes, the damn moon is hollow. Now put that in your pipe and smoke it. The damn moon is hollow. Come on, man. <laughs> While <laughs> this is going on, this is where Patrick Wilson's like waking up. And you're totally right, Chris. Make him really hung over here. Make it liquor bottles all over the place. But when oh, he yeah, dodges maybe. this landlord, this is some of the really bad fucking screen background stuff i was talking about like Ooh. when he jumps out of the driveway on that motorcycle that is completely in front of his screen when he pulls up to the observatory like that parking lot all of that is totally screened oh. and it looks so bad well, it looks really bad because it's all so much more like very clearly like like cartoonish looking as compared to everything else. like yes. even when they go to the hotel too it's like complete it looks like shit until yes. you get into the actual hotel because then it's actually stylized. But before then, it just looks like a cartoon. Because all of that is fake. Like, that sign is just fake yes. CGI. It's goddamn. I mean, this is a, a this is a really nice, like, warning sign sure. for, like, hey, you want to use this fucking, you know, LCD technology or whatever? Like, look what happens when you use it poorly. You're, you're, you're making me, like, get nostalgic over seeing, like, a neon sign shot on real film like that's oh, yeah. literally all i want to you'll, see at this point and i can't never, fucking get it you'll never see that again it's going to be in like a nolan film and that's it yeah like you're spending hundreds of million dollars on this movie and i know you're not shooting it in the united states it's in canada but like you couldn't take a day to have patrick wilson just get a permit have patrick wilson ride up on a motor- motorcycle in front of the griffin observatory or nah. just use another building that you have easier access to as you observe i mean come on nope we gotta flush the moon so you gotta we gotta move on to flushing more moons before we do that <laughs> <laughs> moon so uh patrick wilson shows up and he gets these security guards to like escort uh houseman out of there and houseman's got a bunch of his research printed out and he's like and just read it and, you know and then he's like well, why does it smell like cat piss no reason just <laughs> read it is this a tea uh, probably not probably cat piss i'll get back to you after you read it <laughs> there's got to be someone out there drinking cat pee- cat piss at tea time right mm-hmm. that's Probably. what they, that's what they they do instead of getting vaccinated dude <laughs> <laughs> this is the way out <laughs> uh, and, like well, uh i love this moment where like he uh he's leaving the observatory or something like it was it's something around this time and the wife is like this is where the wife calls and she's like, I can't believe you're calling right. Like, you know, what's going with, with all that's going on or something yes. like that. And he's like, what, what are you talking about? And like, we cut to fucking white Bronco OJ Simpson. footage. Yeah. What are we ta- <sighs> like? What are we doing? The sun is in a high speed car chase in the fucking opening minutes of this movie. I thought we were talking about the moon. Fall. Well, exactly. no, this is going to set up his great driving later in the film, know, escaping the moon falling. God uh, damn. Yeah. It's dumb. I mean, he it's does dumb. a moon. He does a moon jump. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He does yeah, the moon a- jump. We actually don't get enough of, you know, I know I don't even want him in the movie. I don't even want <laughs> this section, but if, to build it up like this, him being pulled over for this car chase or whatever, yeah. we really don't get enough of him doing that at the end of the film. Mm. No, no, we don't. And and I honestly, if you're gonna introduce a, a teenage son like this and actually use him, which they do, which is terrible, yeah. Um, <laughs> what you should do is just send him to space. 
Get him up there yeah, too. Exactly. Oh, Somehow. if he get, got in on it. Yeah, I mean, you could even. I know Steve is gonna is gonna yell in a minute, but <laughs> even as a stowaway, mm, I would ooh, I would oh. I would at least accept it. Yeah. No, you know what? Uh, in this instance, if we're stowing away to streamline the narrative, <laughs> I can get behind it, Chris. In this yes. one instance. Okay. I mean, okay, cause, I like cause, that. Because it does come together quickly when they do have to take off. Like, he could just fucking be like, oh, I, I, I'm going. I'm leaving now. Bah, 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 inside. Or like, because it is, it's very like that part uh, is very much like contact, you know what I mean? Like where the first one blows up and the next one you have to use it and just do that and be like, we just need another ha- ha- set of hands. Sonny, you happen to be here. You want to con- mm-hmm. come up and just help your dad? And it's like, absolutely. Or we don't have yeah. a suit for you, so you'll probably die very <laughs> soon. But do you want to help for a second? You have no training to go into space. In, in this movie, it's kind of just like taking a long, uh, like a cross country flight. So don't worry about it. It's but not that's so the bad. thing, right? You could, you could sort of position, I mean, you have him, <clears throat> you know, skillfully driving this car maybe it's a thing where he's a fucking you know gearhead he's a car sure, enthusiast yes. and so it's like all right you have some mechanical skills that you know it's not a one-to-one but that might transfer we could use an extra set of hands or something because let's face it game of thrones guy isn't going to be much for getting around the ship and, you, know? you know talking about car guy and shit you could have condensed that with the jay leno's garage that uh, uh patrick wilson has and maybe it doesn't even have to be as estranged as the movie has yes. it yep. but I know, yep. I know. Roland loves divorce, so here we are. Which, like, you could still have divorce and have the kid have a good relationship with his father. You know what but I mean? impossible. No, I'm kidding. But so this guy, <laughs> uh, this kid goes to. He, he just turned eighteen, and they're like, "Hey, we have to treat you like an adult." And like, the, it's the hearing, and then Patrick Wilson's like, "The drugs weren't his; it was his friends. He was just scared. What the fuck?" And I'm like, "Pardon me, I, <laughs> I, I want drugs. <laughs> I wanted more of that arrest scene now." Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, the arrest scene that you do see is just from the TV, and it is hilarious because, again, in this world that this movie is set in. Like the United States public at large is way more tuned in to the lives and names of astronauts because when this kid's getting arrested, they're like, Oh, yeah, you know, fucking Sonny so and so, you know him as the son of disgraced <laughs> <Yeah>. astronauts. <laughs> oh, come on, come on, the, the, the no son, way. the son of aeronautical shithead Brian Harper. <laughs> Uh, is being oh, oh, uh, fucking in the middle of news. Like this is like a, a huge news break, and this is supposed to yeah. be California, right? Yes. Or, yes. Yes. It's LA. yes, it's Los Angeles. Yeah. This is major news that this fucking shithead is doing this. Like I, I don't well, know. Well, you know, man. in LA, I think the LA News loves doing like high speed car chases, right? I do because well, oh, they're yeah. always crossing their fingers. Oh come on, man! Oh, <laughs> Another just, one. Let it happen. Absolutely. Happen again. Let come a, on, baby. Fiery wreck, shootout, OJ two. Yeah, any of that. <laughs> OJ two. But- he's back. At- <laughs> Better than ever. <laughs> they oh, rebuilt yeah. him stronger, faster. Yeah, he's now, killed two <laughs> waiters now. Now he's Nevada's problem. <laughs> and <laughs> meanwhile, Michael Pena was like, he hired the lawyer and he's pissed. And like, well, you know, how are we going to get Sonny out of jail? It's like, well, he's going to have to cool his heels for a weekend, but then we're going to figure it out. This kid, the, the story that you don't see is this kid in fucking real L.A. jail while the yeah. moon is falling. Mm-hmm. This uh-huh. when, the, when the military comes to get him, there's nothing left. No. They're like, first of all, like who's like the moon is falling. Like you're telling me these guards are showing up for work. Nope, absolutely no not. Like, no. no one's feeding these people. Uh, we, we hate the prisoners of this country. All of these people would, would have starved to death long ago. Quickly to loop back to OJ2. I got the uh, tagline there, courtesy of Chris Cabin. You're OJ2 colon Nevada going to believe this. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Right? Nevada gonna believe this. That's yeah, it. you know what? I'll take yeah. it. Yeah, I like well, that. That could also that be would the, look good on a poster. It that would. could also be the New York Post headline for when he gets married again. Right. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, oh, sorry, uh, Steve. Oh, no, you were you were you were talking Whatever. about the prisoner situation. Well, no, no I mean it's it's the second time I'm going to be able to say this. It would turn into Jose Saramago's blindness very yes. quickly, <laughs> yeah. and everybody would just be blind and fucking eating each other and killing each other. And that's Did that's kind of how it'd be. Book recently? Oh no, no, I was just reminded. I I read that book like I, I know decade, like almost over a decade ago at this point. But like I was just thinking about the other day and I thinking about like <laughs> societal collapse because this would be societal collapse immediately. Oh, absolutely. Like, which which they, you get and the last place you want to be is, is in jail at that point. Absolutely. <laughs> the it's last place such you want a, to be. It's such a fucking tease though, Eric. Like we see it, but it is such a little 
It's just like seeing a fucking tit for two seconds. Yes, you know yeah. like, like, oh, tit for two seconds. Oh my god, I like that because you like. We get I this, need more of that. You get a terrorist on the news too. Yes. And they're talking about yes. religious sex doing violence, and you see like yeah, the like loot. sex cults breaking out. And yeah, shit. it starts like footage on the news of looting, and they're like chaos, blah blah blah, sort of like the news yeah. now. Ke- Ke- Keith Rainieri's <laughs> fucking running free again. Yeah, but then they got this guy with like guns and this beard, and it's like, oh boy, you know, the terrorists are here now. I'm like, what? The, yeah, the, the, the religious no fanatics, armed religious fanatics, is the terms they use with this. And I yes. was wondering, do you think that's just to set up the the weird guys at the end, the I, hick militants? Which kind like, of nice sort of, if yeah. we leaned into that. Like, yes. give me anything from that to that. The that's way that they, like. the way that they focus in on the television news broadcast again when they're talking about some guy who has created this like sex cult <laughs> that is like rising up or whatever. And they show the guy and it's like an actor playing this guy. I was like, Oh, because this is a Roland Emmerich's movie, man. Yes. And like, he loves folks in a bunch of different groups of people. We are going to see what these people are doing during the moonfall. Yes, shit. that would be cool. And they never cut back to that guy. Well, because there's no, there's no scope whatsoever to your point. It is a, uh, a tit for, for two seconds. Like I would love to see like, what is what is anything like? You know what I mean? Like even 2012 does this better because it had a better, better, bigger budget in terms of just like kind of showing the world off off the rails. You know yes. what I mean? And just like the moon is getting closer and closer. Like that that becomes evident uh, because uh, Houseman leaks that news. Uh, it's kind of great. Uh, Halle Berry is like number two at NASA. We're not talking about her a lot. Who cares? Uh, she's number two at NASA. Her boss is just like. You always wanted my job. You got it. I'm going. And everyone's just going to Colorado. Like, Dude. Colorado is like this. We were just there. It's lovely. It, it's not invincible. No, it's, it's not, closer no. to the moon. <laughs> it's closer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the thing that it, 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 you made me realize something, Steve, as you were saying that, like, really, besides the Roland Emmerich ubiquitous uh, New York City being destroyed yep. in that one shot. You see the <laughs> New York gets Chry- drilled. Did you Chry- Chrysler building gets fucking punted like a football. Did you notice the one building he didn't uh-huh. destroy? The Freedom oh, Tower yeah, yeah. <laughs> stands. Come on. I, give it a, I know. Give it, a, give, it a, give it a hit. They cut before it definitely is destroyed. Well, yeah, I mean, it's not making out of it. But well, like, look, the moon would think that's that, in but bad taste. The moon would think that's bad taste. I can't, I can't, I can't take that down. The moon the would moon. say too soon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but besides that, though, it really does feel that once we leave L.A., this movie, like the only place the moon is falling is in Colorado. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Because you, none of the characters are spread out. Like in, in 2012, isn't there also like, there's those guys at the science station, and they have yeah. their own little story, yes. and they never meet anybody else. It's well, very much more spread out in 2012, can, which can, it's absolutely. not a good movie, but it's better than this. No, and like ID4, you have, you know, not a ton of it, but it's like at least people in different parts of the country, and then you see at least here and there the shots of the different groups what? all over the world. Different uniting. kinds of people, too, in that film. Real yes. quickly, a line. Of, I watched this movie, by the way, in theaters because I was so excited. The trailer looked so stupid. Me and my Incredible. wife. Incredible. Wow. So you contribute to the $11 million box <laughs> <Exactly>. office? <laughs> it, was, it was two of us, and we got drinks at Alamo. So we were probably, I don't know if that goes towards the box I'm office. Sorry, score. $19 million sure. yes. it, it made in the United States and Canada. That is really really terrible we anyway, didn't make chi- we didn't get chicken fingers so maybe that maybe, maybe we would have oh, bumped it's a to, to, to your point i'll just toss out there because it's a little interesting fact uh sometimes depending on you know whatever the deal is that the company is demanding and this is strictly with like bigger films only like disney kind of stuff mm. um they may sometimes say like cool like our take is this percentage of your ticket sales and also this percentage of your fucking concession uh, uh, concession yeah. oh wow every, every once in a while that will happen that's yeah. insane so, but, sometimes your moon hat and will count towards moonfall's <laughs> budget uh, take oh well done dude um, a moon did you have a moon hat and steve I had, I had a moon over my hammy though <laughs> uh. no but here's so here's the question there's this line uh, it's like these two science guys who don't eat shit at the end of the movie, and they should. Which uh, science guys? The two science guys. Or, oh, I guess they, they, do, they, they eat do, shit. They do eat the, shit, you're right. The white yeah, guy and the shit. black guy? Yes, those two oh, guys. Yeah, oh, they go down hard. They do go down hard. But like, it, when, when the moon stuff is being revealed, uh, and the guys, like, the, the, the first head of NASA is like, oh, my God, that means we have three months. Like, 
Well, no, actually, sir, because the moon is getting closer, time is going to change and months will be shorter. Therefore, we only have three weeks. And I'm like, yep, none of that makes sense. Why, like, why don't you? Why didn't you just start with three weeks? <laughs> Just start why with three. don't you? Yeah, just tell me three weeks. Why? What, what, what's with the, this fucking nice little the fucking three are, months? So you like every so if the moon started to rapidly spin around the globe faster, you think everyone's like, "That's a day. That's a day. That's you just <laughs> flipping your calendar." Like, no, your fucking like internal clocks and the clocks no. you have on your phone, etc. No. They would not follow. They don't follow the moon. Nobody sure, has like, any sense of time anyway. <laughs> the world is ending. To- fucking is, maniac. Time is fake. It's fucking bullshit, dude. I would I would love like a seven minute Thanksgiving scene. Like literally, it's just like, all right, it's the seven minutes it's Thanksgiving. We're gonna celebrate it. Uh, cook a turkey in an, in twenty minutes. But you hold it out to that hot moon that's coming down. <laughs> Here it comes. Yeah, you you get ready, and when the the gravity starts getting wonky for whatever reason, you let the turkey go, and it goes flying up. And on its way up, it gets like cooked, you know, yes. and going through the atmosphere. And then by the time the moon keeps moving, you know, then the turkey drops back down. You catch it right on a tray. Yeah, moon roasted. A moon roasted turkey, dude. Two neighbors like at at each other, uh, just at, hanging out outside, uh, the, right right near the fucking mailbox. And you know, Bob, I just feel like the time between Thanksgiving and Christmas just gets quicker and quicker every year. Oh no, it's the moon's falling. It's uh, everything's quicker now. <laughs> See that big fiery hole in the yeah. sky? There's been ten <laughs> sunsets today. <laughs> Wait, there's the the. What's going on? Are you, oh, are yeah. you serious, man? Oh, I yeah. Just, the Marvel movies are like 15 minutes now, man. <laughs> just like, without you watch them, they go right back 15 minutes. It would be interesting if you actually saw some consequences of the yes. moon going around the Earth multiple times. <laughs> I know the consequences of the tides and the flooding or whatever that does happen, but like, show me some quick sunsets and sunrises and It'd shit. It'd be really kind of yeah. cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, While they are uh, uh, discussing this whole, like, oops, it's actually three weeks, um, they're like, well, so what are we going to do? How can we keep this from the public? The funniest part of this movie is all of their phones start exploding with uh, like emergency alert updates that just goes moon out of orbit. <laughs> <Yes>. Phone alert. <laughs> you know, to stop a tweet, I think, yes, the earth rotates and that causes day and night. So maybe the moon wouldn't necessarily affect it, but maybe some more eclipses, pal. Exactly. Who knows? God but they, this movie does say that time would be, be faster because the moon is rotating faster. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mm-hmm. make any sense, and it never has. If I move my legs faster, my, <laughs> I don't know, time goes faster too then, right? <laughs> yes. Is that how it works? Mm-hmm. Casey? Uh-huh. <laughs> Casey? <laughs> Oh, just trust Elon, Eric. Whatever <laughs> Elon says is what's true. Oh, Ooh, God. Uh, one of the dumbest lines in this movie, in a fucking solar system of stupid lines, is when Halle Berry's, like, having it out with this NASA guy, and uh, she just goes, uh, I work for the American people, and you're keeping them in the dark. And okay, I'm just like, uh-huh. oh, man. You know what? You just, you work for NASA, all right? You know do you really work for the American people? And they, also, keep, I don't, they keep I don't everyone think so. in the dark. Then the answer yeah. would be like, hey, man, you want me to tell them that the moon is falling? Do you want your neighbor to fucking eat your child tonight? I don't think so. <laughs> like, that's what's going to happen. You're going to go home and your kid is going to be between two pieces of bread because we went on national television. A California and told cheeseburger. People, yeah. Exactly. And told people <laughs> that the moon was falling. If, if that happened, are you eating a kid? Steve, let's say you see a nice plump one across the uh, you know, in the window across the way, you going sure. over there? Uh, no, I mean I would take uh, the Donald, I will, which I will now call the Donald Sutherland out of this one, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which you know what? Fuck you, movies. Show me that shit. Exactly. We're Should, he's about fucking. It? He's rolling away in that wheelchair, dude, and he just like puts it on autopilot and he blows his brains out. As the scene really. starts, I mean, it's it's a three minute Donald Sutherland cameo, which is, you know, apparently you, his, did you see the trivia? Oh, go yeah, ahead. His, you, you got it. You got it. His son, Rogue Sutherland, was one of the uh, backers of this. Excuse me? Uh, There's a Rogue, rogue Sutherland? Rogue? How are we, how we are got we, a Rogue reg? Sutherland. <laughs> the Sutherland has gone rogue. It's spelled, it's spelled well, it's this, how would you say the, the name of the director, Nicholas Reg? It's spelled the same way. Yeah, Rowing. So, however, however, his name was pronounced. Maybe that's how this is pronounced. Mm, I no yeah. idea. R O R O E G. He Got is a, a a financier, and he was his money was is part of this conglomerate that made this one of the most expensive stupid movies ever made. And uh, he 
They're like, hey, do you want to ask your dad if he wants to be in this? Uh, and he is. Uh, yes, I uh, named you after the uh, man who got me to feel up Julie Christie. <laughs> it, was, uh, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. <laughs> I mean, oh, oh. I, get, I get it, you know, like that stuff happens all the time and everything. And it's like it's a Canadian production and sure, the Sutherlands are Canadian royalty and whatever. But I don't know, man, like. You show me fucking Donald Sutherland in a movie. I'm hoping for at least ten minutes. Exactly. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a, and the way that they set it up is like he was this mysterious character that like was charged with, you know, like uh, hiding all of this information about the conspiracy. Like they knew it all. And they knew that like, it was hollow because of the Apollo Eleven mission or whatever. Yeah. 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 So it's like I, I don't know. That's kind of fascinating. You're totally, you know, swimming in this pool of conspiracy theories. Like. This dude was involved yeah, yeah. in a cover up. Like, why, why is it not a character? Do you think they tried to get Kiefer originally and they were like, wait, 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 wait. Moon already landed on that guy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, totally, dude. Yeah. I, that guy already he blew his brains out on a golf much course. Much better before, Moonfall, uh, Melancholia. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was going to say, if Kiefer, I, I want his last uh, uh, bit in this whole world is tackling that Christmas tree. <laughs> yeah. I, really, I really want that to be the last work. That I he love with this that world. video. Oh, it's my so God. wonderful. That's great. It's, but he He's also truly great in melancholy. He is very good. And I mean, this is like uh, the the thing I always think about with Emmerich is that because of all these characters you have, like the action does suffer tremendously because of all the characters. Yep. So yeah. he really is just like an Altman for shitheads. Yes. Like it's just <laughs> as many characters as you can get in there. And we're just going to have them do the dumbest shit you've ever heard of. Just at the, the oh, uh, how about a moon scrape? We're going to do a moon flush and a moon scrape. Just get a <laughs> bunch of characters have to deal with the moon scrape. And that's it. That's it. We'll let it ride. And that's it. They're kind of like, what uh, all those movies have been other than like the Shakespeare movie. The only thing that's missing though is like you got to have all those people then like talking over one another. Mm, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, they're, they are talking a lot. It's just all crap. It's just like the worst shit you've ever heard. <laughs> hey, speaking of the worst shit you've ever heard, I think another candidate for worst line in this movie is that part where um, Michael Pena is like trying to talk with the wife about like, Let's just Getting go to Colorado. Got to get to Colorado. Got to get to Colorado, dude. Gotta and they it. have the news footage on in the background. And it's getting kind of gnarly and whatever and scary for the kids. And he goes, hey, Google, turn off TV. Uh -huh. Like, yeah, come on. Just <laughs> God damn it. If you have to do that, I mean. Just do TV off, dude. Why does it have to be a fucking commercial for Google? We had a commercial for Lexus when we showed his oh, his job, oh, man. Yeah, dude, Lexus is the fucking fifth character of this movie. Bro. Yeah, uh, Scott oh, Eastwood yeah. I think, plays <laughs> Lexus. Yeah. Oh man, uh, imagine <laughs> having to be the person who has to give the Lexus people a call after the fucking uh, what the the th two million dollar opening. And you're oh, just yeah. like, uh, uh, yeah, uh, a lot of people are seeing it and they say that they like the Lexus in it. They like the, the how we used it. But, I mean, but it's just I don't know one of those things where it's like <clears throat> it's a Lexus like do you really need to have it advertised in a movie I feel like if you're a person that can afford to buy a Lexus you're aware that a Lexus yeah. exists you're not well, buying it because of Moonfall you're saying yeah yeah precisely but that's just the thing it's like e even from the point of view of just like the movie like they're trying to sell it as like, you know what would be the perfect vehicle for when the world is ending? Alexis. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I'm just like, what? who cares? The you official want a car of Armageddon. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a truck or something. God damn it. The official car. We're all dead. Yes. It's great. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if uh, it's four horsemen. It's uh, four Lexusmen. Uh, <laughs> I mean, four, this this is a Hemi. It's got four horsemen of the apocalypse power. <laughs> what we're, what we're going to do for the uh, the next ad for Lexus is we're going to have the, the the beautiful Lexus playing chess with Max von Sydow, <laughs> and we're just going to see how that goes. Get a new Lexus pestilence today. <laughs> <laughs> Don't wait for the famine model. It might not come out. <laughs> Buy the new Lexus Horn of Gabriel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, to the Donald Sutherland thing, you do want, at this point, we do expect an Ad Astra. You want mm, that yes, length. Yep. Exactly. Um, yep. Ad, Ad Astra and Backdraft have the perfect amount of side Sutherland. Ad Astra is as low as I'll go, dude. You're absolutely right. <laughs> low as I'll go. Yeah, I, I, I that's like a, that's that. all I can do today. By man. the way, gr great moon movie right there. Fantastic. Movie. Hell yeah. James Gray got fucked over making that movie, man. Release the Gray cut. Absolutely, mm. please. But so they decide, all right, we're going to launch uh, some rockets to the moon and see what's going on. And this sort of montage is where we do get all the stuff about, like, 
looting, civil unrest yeah. is immediately going on. This is where, oh, this is where it was, where they have the thing about religious fanaticism, and the guy looks exactly like Rasputin. And I was oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. This guy's going to be in the a fucking character. movie. Yes, he should be a character in the movie. You got to make a guy that looks like Rasputin, he's got to be in the movie. Like, they're totally. about to figure it out, and he walks up with a suicide vest on or something. <laughs> Oh, so it's exact, exactly contact is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, right back. You know back. what? We, got, we just keep making contact again because it was a better movie. <laughs> Very true. Underwatched uh, movie, that contact. It's a Much good one. maligned. Oh, yeah. The Zemeckis, before What Lies Beneath, that era kind of got forgotten, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but, yeah. like, the hotel. So uh, Harper goes to meet uh, uh, Casey at the hotel, and this is where we start getting the flooding. And there's this scene where very clearly Harper is looking at Casey getting swept up by the tides and is wondering, do I save this fat man? Yep. <laughs> do, oh yeah. Do, do I like, want to, do I want to bother? Because like, come on, you, it's right there. Like, I, can't I can't swim. swim. Yeah. <laughs> First dude. of all, come on. You can't swim. I mean, you can't swim even a little bit to the right. stairs that are four inches away from me. I, right. can, I can barely at swim, that but point, I can get the stairs. I mean, hey, he, he was asking for it. Doggy paddle it. Come on. Exactly. Also, exactly. Though, Work for it, dude. He's, he, like what is it he gets like swept up and just staring at the tidal wave like because yes. patrick wilson has to be like uh hey man you know tidal wave and shit mm -hmm. and this dude's just like staring at it and it smashes it. i thought this dude was dead i yep. was like all right he just got hit with a tidal wave and like glass coming right. at him at a very forceful speed and then instead at the end we get we gotta do it for casey Oh, dude, whatever. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so he gets, Jesus but it's kind of Christ. great. So, like, yeah, there's this stupid conference, and, like, we're taking some pot shots at conspiracy theories. But, yes, the tidal wave comes in. Oswald did it. Yeah. <laughs> Not, like, now, Not now, Gary. Not now, Gary. What's funny about that line, too, <laughs> is him shouting out that Oswald did it. That's, like, the, the Warren opposite. Commission's report on <laughs> Exactly. It. Yes. That's the opposite it's, of conspiracy theory. Yes, exactly. It's the actual thing that was supposedly happened, which it definitely didn't. Did not. But, <laughs> but yeah. But they, so like now it's just him and Patrick Wilson in this hotel room together. Like, well, I guess the world is ending. You want to just like bunk up for the night? Dude, it's fucking bathrobe time with yeah, these guys. <laughs> the two of them in bathrooms is hilarious. Like, we're just drying our clothes out, I guess, is the idea. But it's just a couple of dudes uh -huh. hanging out in a hotel room talking about how terrible their lives are in bathrobes. Oh, my, my dad was a flat earther. He <laughs> uh, often told me that you could fall off the edge of the world. And that's what he that's what my mom said he did. He fell off the edge of the world. <laughs> he went out for cigarettes and fell off the edge of the world. He did. <laughs> I knew Daddy was too close to the edge of the world. I was like, don't come back, Daddy. You're Why don't you go buy cigarettes at a store that's not so close to the edge of the world? Are you telling me the ice guards didn't stop him? <laughs> no. The guys no. with the machine guns on the on the edge of the world? No, they didn't, Mr. Harper. My Daddy, he got too close to the truth. <laughs> Wait, Eric, is that seriously a conspiracy theory? Yes, yeah, yeah, that there's, like, I guess, like, armed personnel to stop you from finding out the truth that the world ends at that point. And, and armed there, personnel, like, not from any particular I, uh, I, government? I, I, don't, I don't remember. Ice Knights, much like Game of Thrones, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, that's exactly, like, the wall, yeah. <laughs> um, but, so, like, at this point, Halle Berry has sent government helicopters very important that government helicopters never go out of business that no. they can get you anywhere you need to go in exactly five minutes no matter what no matter what the script details so they they get picked up by uh helicopters like i gotta bring my fat friend here with me because he knew that the moon was falling like i don't know dude you barely met this guy he had you pissy paper and all well, of a sudden <laughs> that's your the best thing. buds he, re he well he read all the piss paper uh -huh. and was like Despite the fact that the entire time I was reading this, I was choking back vomit. Mm -hmm. uh, his calculations are stunningly accurate. So, like, he's on board with it. Yes. And I guess maybe because, you know, he doesn't know necessarily how our friend here came to this information. He brings him along so the guy can, like, back it up or whatever. But normally you're right, Steve. Like, shoot this guy in the head mm -hmm. and just take the professional astronaut with you. <laughs> yes. And, and make it about what you two want to do rather than what this guy wants to do. Right. Because he's pretty annoying, I'll be honest. And mm -hmm. honestly, if he can't swim, 
You, you're going to bring him up to space? This, what, <laughs> this, 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 you really honestly think that's an okay that's, thing to I, do? I mean, look, talk about the, you know, to, to quote Armageddon and the great William Fickner, talk about the wrong stuff. Um, because <laughs> I mean, like, rear. <laughs> he says that in that movie. Uh, is the like, all the training you do where you're in time like cyclotrons and you're spinning around and not throwing up and all this stuff like the yeah. mental and physical anguish you have to get to to get inside of a fucking astronaut's cockpit. This guy is just is just there. He was a janitor yesterday and yep. now he's just doing yeah, it. It's well, fine. that is the that is the thing that I find really fascinating about this movie, Steve, mm. is because it really puts through the notion, not just with your crew, but like the whole act of going into space is just as simple as peeling a car out of a driveway. Yes. <laughs> because when they like are, you know, eventually, it, you know, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here, but it comes down to like, <clears throat> you know, there's one rocket left and, you know, they have to shit or get off the pot and do this thing. So it's Halle Berry, uh, uh, Patrick Wilson, and our friend, Mr. Casey Houseman here in the rocket. And like, Halle Berry's like, all right, everybody else can go home except these two other dudes. That's all we really need to get this launch off. And then they get into the spacecraft and she's like, all right, dudes, you guys can go home. I'll take it from here. And she just like fires her up and drives the fucking space. And I was like, <laughs> it can't be that simple. And literally, when the, she fires it up, there's water from a flood yeah. engulfing this thing and they just make it out and yeah. like, no, well you know i think she she pulled uh the uh view the viewfinder down or the uh the sunblock thing down and got the keys that way oh well. i see. oh definitely <laughs> <laughs> The Kenny Loggins music starts playing. Yeah. As you know, the, <laughs> just, Patrick Wilson, like, you're flooding the, it. You're flooding it. You're flooding it. <laughs> We're just going to the fucking danger zone so casually, just flying into space. It is so, so fucking funny. Also, like when Halle Berry has that impassioned speech, because, like, yes, it's very much like contact. The first one is destroy, or the, they have only one rocket left, et cetera, et cetera. I just like, you know what? All of you people have done great work to get us up to speed. You can now go home. I'd be like, Hey, uh, my house is uh, under 50 feet of water. I guess I'll stay here for the night, if that's you know, cool with you. <laughs> you know, I, I think, yes, that's definitely, <laughs> some dudes would definitely have to do that. But it is funny, Steve, that there's not, what I was totally expecting to have happen was the fucking control room to radio back and be like, I don't think so, ma'am. We're with you till the oh, end. Yeah, you know, blah, blah, blah. No. but everybody's no. like, "No, yeah, fuck this," and they all just they, abandoned them. They all run to Colorado, and they're all killed by religious extremists. <laughs> well, yeah, they immediately get on all these helicopters, and they all fall into gravity waves of water that drown them. All. And like, they it's immediate. Like they get yes. on these helicopters immediately, and that's after. By the way, we've also survived some like earthquake that shattered the entire building and then everything's just right back up oh, afterwards. It's fine. Don't worry about yeah it. everything's so uh, totally fucking fine i i i really <laughs> i would i would have to kick this because what they do is they go and get the endeavor from some fucking museum yes. uh and that's which, the, they, which, which has graffiti on it that says fuck the moon because people were <laughs> mad at the moon it, i love very, that detail <laughs> It's very funny. They they actually call it back when she's like, "Oh, you know what? I'm kind of liking fuck the moon now." Yeah. On, on the side. But what if you heard this Casey Houseman? You're in this fucking truck hauling this goddamn endeavor down the road. Uh, there are uh, uh, gas thieves just everywhere around yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Yep. And this idiot just says. <laughs> Wow, this is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you be like, I have to kick him out of the car. He has to, to yeah. go yes, away. I'm sorry. I, it's just got to be us. I'm nothing sorry. Nothing is exciting. Uh, people are cannibal. Cannibalism this is, is exciting. <laughs> they, should have, they should have done enough of mice and men with that guy. Right? Um, yes, please. Well, they kind yeah, of oh, do. Uh, yeah. oh, hey, uh, KC, could you uh, read this uh, this uh, printout really quickly? We got some new data and we'd love you to analyze. And he just like turns toward the <laughs> river and looks at it, <laughs> reading his paper, and then they just yes. blow his fucking brains yes. out. No, he, he he reads his paper and just says, This is exciting, isn't it? <laughs> uh, you're, going, you're going to kill me, aren't you? Well, fine. Just let me have a final prayer. I believe in one Elon, the father, the almighty, the creator <laughs> of Twitter and SpaceX. I hope I'm a reply guy in heaven. <laughs> oh, oh, favorite me in heaven, Elon. Favorite me in heaven. The Steal my memes in heaven, Elon. <laughs> Steal my memes. Yeah, I did it all for the memes. 
Not uh, at butt memes. Uh, also, if you're trying to save the world from a moonfall, you wish pedophiles. Because <laughs> the moonfall will actually kill all the pedophiles. Oh. So you must be anti killing pedophiles. Right, and Mars is where the non pedophiles are. That's right, Mr. Musk. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> I do love uh, Halle Berry looking at the fucking footage of. Uh, of the uh, that astronaut team. Oh yeah, and the fucking like, it's not a creature really, but the nanobots like <sighs> jamming into these fucking helmets, killing these people. Pretty cool stuff. It's yeah. cool enough, but it's just like I, I just I hate the way these things look and slash do not look. You know what yes. I mean? Like it is dumb. Yeah, it looks like a, like a sci fi movie, like Sci Fi yeah. Channel. Yes, it is pretty cheap. That the only way you see it is through the fucking security footage. Like you don't see it when it happens oh, i don't think anyway by the way no. over an hour into this we have not mentioned kelly you as michelle because she yes. is a non-character Absolutely. she does three and a half things the first scene with her it's Halle Berry. she's like getting her kid ready for bed and she's like, or ready for breakfast and she's like hey could you just make sure that he and like not she's like, could you just make sure that he gets ready for for school and he has breakfast and she's like no problem absolutely i'm like are they in a relate? I, I really thought I was like, I thought hey, they Moonfall. were fucking. Yeah. I was like, cool, man. Good for Moonfall. Yeah. yeah. It would have, please explore this more, but it turns out not to be the case. She's just a exchange student that lives with Halle Berry. Okie dokie. That is not the dynamic they are playing in that scene. I'm sorry. No. Yeah, just nope. plain. Like, I, I, I'm more willing to believe the idea that they first shot it with the idea that they were a couple and then yes. we're like, let's eh, maybe not. And then we're like, oh yeah, he's a, a, a nanny or something. But a you foreign know. exchange student who is sentenced to be your nanny for your son. <laughs> like, what yeah. is this? Great question. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not great, but like also, yeah, there's a, there's an intimacy to that first scene. I yes. was actually really excited. I was like, I okay. they're she, groggy. Listen. They are just in their PJs, handing yes. each other coffee. It feels yeah. like, it feels and, like a couple. I, Yes, because Halle Berry's like, you got to do this for the boy. You know, he's yes. got this to do today. And this is the numbers on the fridge, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, they cut. And, you know, Kelly, you like sort of like fucking bites her lower lip. And is just like, <laughs> I have everything under control. Don't worry about it. And I was like, did you just eat her out? Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, I was really stunned that that as, was not the case. It's as intimate the, as the uh, Maxwell House. You're my present this year, Chris. You know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's all of that same kind of like sleepy, dreamy intimacy. Well, well it, yes, it, and it does. It, it, it's worse because then when you get her with Sunny, there's like no chemistry whatsoever. No, not at all. Period, yes. and like. There's nobody that she connects with so easily as she does with Halle Berry. Yeah. So it's just weird that you can't really make and and, and like yeah, she's just like, uh, yeah, I'm just here to help. Essentially, is her whole character. Yes. Like, Hi, here to help. Hi. Whatever I, <laughs> I and uh, to help the Chinese box office numbers. Of course. Well, yeah, well, of course. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, you got Chinese money in this movie. Absolutely. Man. They're hoping that it works. It did uh, better there than here, I think. Well, uh, of course yeah. it did. I but, mean. Go she ahead. also has this uh, her ex husband who is military guy and like Doug. I am military <laughs> guy Doug, the worst actor I have ever He's seen. Particularly <laughs> bad. It's really something else. He's always squinting. I don't know if he's high or lost his glasses, uh, but it is really difficult to pay attention to the movie. It's it's hard enough in general, but when he's on, I like literally just shut down. I just I can't do it. I can't. I kept attention. thinking he was a robot. I was like, is this guy supposed to be a Terminator? Is that another twist in this movie? I, I, I don't get it, and I don't get how Halle Berry would want to marry this man. Please. Yeah, I don't know, man. Maybe for the government connections. Maybe, maybe that's. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's just like the other guy that's like, hey, by the way, we're going to nuke the moon because it's like that kind of a movie where <laughs> the sure. moon shall be nuked if we don't get it ready in time. You know what I mean? You only have there's a short amount of time left or else the moon's going to get nuked. <laughs> Oh, this guy, I guess, was on that Marvel's Inhuman show. Yeah. Oh, so they hired an Inhuman actor to play on it? <laughs> was he the he voice played... of the dog? <laughs> no, he played Gorgon. Oh, cool. What's Gorgon? <laughs> ringing any bells? No Remember I, him? No, I mean, it's uh, I, can't, I have difficulty remembering the Z-level uh, Marvel properties <laughs> that I'm supposed to give a shit about. Can we get some uh, Gorgon for the tip? <laughs> yes, sir. Was it spicy or not spicy? Chili on it? Oh, spicy Gorgon. Yeah. The only way to Gorgon. Yeah, I take I take it spicy, yeah. I mean, 
even fucking Michael Bay's Transformers movies give you more sense of how things are affected worldwide yes, yes. than yep. this movie does. This movie is just like, you know, we got the security for, you know, we got security footage from a lot of places, actually. Uh, it's really cheap to shoot. Um, and uh, we got it from like, th- we, actually, this is all from Asia, just generally Asia. That's just all it's from. Like, they don't even say, like, oh, this is China. This yes. is what, like, it's just like, no, this is uh, the Asian feed we've got going here. And uh, yep. this is where all the bad stuff is happening. At, at, ba- by the way, back to gravity waves and the fucking mission. Oh, oh by the way, Sp- SpaceX is helping us. Thank you. That's Elon. right. Yes. That's another thing is our friends at SpaceX are helping us. And then. No. Oh, I guess it's that. the yes. friends at SpaceX and the Chinese government. Yes. yes thank oh, you. Our friends well. at SpaceX are helping us, which causes Houseman to say, I love Elon. Oh, I love Elon. Oh, man. This two yeah, Elon. the best movie of the year was Moonfall. Because <laughs> it's the first movie to so severely suck my dick. <laughs> you know what? It could actually happen. You know that that the Moonfall, it could uh-huh. actually happen. Uh-huh. I have scientists uh, that, that says so. Wow, well, he's brilliant. He's absolutely yeah. brilliant. He's the best. Well, if you look at the box office numbers of Moonfall, it actually did better than the Batman, but the (laughs) libs don't want you to believe that. You have to look at the numbers that are not being reported. (laughs) Uh, So whatever. Uh, They're going... They are now flying into space. It's just Halle Berry, him, Patrick Wilson, and Houseman. Meanwhile, Sonny and Kelly Who and Halle Berry's adorable son are driving to Denver where nothing could ever bad happen. That's I true. Guess. <laughs> the, 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 the very cute son uh, at one point uh, says, goes, uh, Halle Berry walks in the room and he's just like, Mommy, are we going to die? <laughs> it's like, uh, th- thank you, son. That's that's the, the big biggest laugh I had of the whole movie. <laughs> the shit with Colorado, you either need to like say NORAD or show me the real bunker shit. I think you see a shot of this, uh, the inhuman guy walking through it at one point. <laughs> yes. But that's it. It's really lax in the whole, this is a government facility department. Yeah, right. <laughs> I really, really don't buy it. Uh, there's like the one desk, like at the point where they're supposed to turn the keys and everything. And then there's the door that opens that he's like backing into when he's got the gun on them. But like, <laughs> right. it really is the teeniest, tiniest That's true. little space. There is that it, moment where it's like, turn your key, sir. We have to nuke the moon. <laughs> it, he's like, I'm like, not going to do it. My wife's in the moon right now. Okay. <laughs> She's fixing the moon, if you please. Okay. She's going to do it. Don't worry about it. It reminds me so much of that place. Like, in the departed where out they're doing the surveillance for the micro processors. Yes, yeah. thing. It's just that like little scene. Like you literally could just open a door and like, Oh, this is where the, the nukes are. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. All right. Nice. Um, so their whole, the whole idea here with, with Patrick Wilson and co is they determine that this fucking, you know, uh, big nanobot creature uh, comes to attack uh, electronic sources, or so they think. So they are going to, like, go up, uh, you know, fly to the moon at the right moment, flip on the electronics to lure this thing out of the moon hole. Uh, oh, man. Uh-huh. Uh, and then they're going to bomb it. They're going <laughs> to yep, set yes. off a, an EMP uh, is going to go off and destroy this thing is the idea. Yes. Sure. Yeah, that's it. And the I whole- mean, listen, it's not any dumber than Armageddon. Guys. Sure. Mm. Well, yeah, co- oh, what is what is dumber about this? I, 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 I guess the a- nanobots, yeah, aliens, the, the, the mega structures in general. I'd be like, yeah, I don't know. It's just a, co- it's just, a, it's just a meteor or a comet that we have yeah, to no, blow up. That's I just cool. mean specifically about the plan, though. Sure, sure. drilling sure. in, and right, but no. Yeah, but that's... then there's this thing that we figure out halfway through, which is that the, the what do you call it? There, the nanobots will only attack technology, but it has to have. Bo- some sort of living creature inside with it, which, mm-hmm. by the way, in case that's where this is where Fuzz Aldrin should have been involved. Like, yo, dude, <laughs> oh, totally, man. Hey, Fuzz Aldrin, you want to save the human race? Yeah, but I guess we're all just setting up this sort of like a V'ger thing where it's like cool with fucking robot people or whatever. And it's just a ta- Yeah. 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 I because mean- this whole, th- I mean, this is a weird, like, you get the backstory about all this. Oh, the, you sure do. In, in the fucking uh. back nine of this movie. <laughs> and it, I mean, it's a lot to digest, but basically these nanobots are like 
from a whole other story where the beginning of the Matrix kind of happened. Yep. And yeah. AI took over and is hunting all the humans. And so, like, this little nano guy is programmed to just destroy any, you know, organic life. Right. And this time. moon, this moon was one of many moons. And this is uh-huh. the last moon. And it made life on Earth. And blah, 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 blah. Yeah. the other ones got destroyed by the sentinels that the agents sent out. Yeah. <laughs> Millions Defin- of years they, ago. they are definitely just sentinels, man. Absolutely. All, all the, yeah, the AI sentinels, like they killed all these people. It looks like, like, after Earth, it looks like the Shyamalan right. like, world yeah, it does. there. And then, like, yeah, this is just one big swarm. Which is a very compelling villain. No. Silence. You know, the, the, the fucking, like, it just, it just doesn't look like, I, I just, I, I'm like, anything to have a villain, even if you have, like, an architect-like guy in the fucking yes, moon. Yes, that's the thing. You've is- already, you've got me to buy the fucking megastructure moon bullshit. Y- you can't you have do, a guy inside. You can't do a parlor scene with nothing. I mean, fucking war yep. games with the uh, program. Joshua had a better parlor scene. Absolutely. No, you're total. I mean, that is the biggest problem is this thing isn't talking. And it's crazy because, Chris, you just mentioned how they, you know, they show the the holograms inside the moon. And that's how, like, the, the AI talks to the people. Uh, by representing like someone from their their memory, also very contact like. By the way, isn't that like her fucking father shows up in that it's movie? Exa- it's yes. Exactly. From contact, yeah. Okay. Like I haven't seen I haven't seen it in a while, but yeah. I was pretty sure that's how contact kind of ends. Mm-hmm. No, it's exactly contact because it it tells it's like uh, this is the form you could understand. Let me tell you all about the moon and blah blah right. blah. But yeah, you need like if the fucking whatever the 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 swarm turned into I don't know. Fuck a David Tennant or somebody. Get some evil yes. British fucker in there. Yes, that was the train of thought I totally lost, but you're completely yes. right, Steve. Like, we see that technology is available with the moon shit, so ergo, this fucking big swarm would be able to make something similar, and yeah, it's just David Tennant. He's got a fucking duster on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Exactly. Well, that it's something. I'm looking at something. I, I, I don't know. I mean, like, you already stole... You already got Sutherland doing a role that's similar to it. Just get Tommy Lee Jones into mm. this fucking yeah. hollow moon and have him be... Sure. And look at look exactly Patrick Wilson in the face like, I didn't love your mother. Or- I, uh, <laughs> I, didn't love your mother. Uh, I just... I, lo- I love the space. I love space, and that's it. Have the AI take the fucking visage of Donald Sutherland, the guy who oh, knew yes. about this nice. from the start. Ooh, yeah. that would be cool, That'd dude. Be nice. Or it's Tommy Lee Jones from Space Cowboys and it's reanimated corpse shit. Like, <laughs> yeah. right? Or, you know what, honestly, you because this movie did it at least twice, do it one more time, and it's just like, you have chosen the form of the Destructor. Oh, hello, <laughs> how are you? That's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm inside the moon now and fucking you right up, you pedophile. <laughs> uh, hello, Patrick Wilson. Would you like to buy Twitter from me? <laughs> are you, do you ha- I know you're disgraced like I am. Do you have any money? <laughs> Would you like some emeralds? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's a it's a gigundo fucking Stave Puff Marshmallow Man kaiju size Elon Musk. Wow, right? great oh, ed- great man. ending, dude. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> I'm going to kill you all because you won't stop posting the picture with Ghislaine. That's stop true. Stop doing that. <laughs> Close personal friends with Ghislaine Maxwell. Pretty weird. Good buddies. Good buddies. His uh, jet went to the island twelve times. Remember to share this episode on Twitter, please. <laughs> I do love these fucking turd kids getting mugged by these survivalists. Oh, yes. my God. It the is guy, so funny. One of these dudes is just like, you a college boy? Well, that, <laughs> yes. in that case, let me give you some of my stuff because you've already been robbed, son. <laughs> <laughs> what, yeah, what, what, what if you say, no. Uh, no, no, I'm not. I, 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 I got a GED. It's just I, a I, lot. I, it's just an 80s movie line. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And... He's got a gun. Um, they wind up driving. They get to Denver where Michael Pena and his mother are, and they pick up the kids. And again, this is exactly what 2012 is. Yes, like part- but, but we need to get a Karen joke in here. Where the- oh, dude, the Karen oh. joke is so bad. Oh, it's a light, white lady guarding the town or the... Com- Planned community or whatever. Oh shit. yes, and her name is Karen, of course, oh, of course team. it is. Yeah, and that is some straight up fucking. They should have ended the show already. Walking Dead stuff. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yep. Yeah, like oh, you're coming into our community that we've built now, and we're already defending it with guns. I just, I, I can't. 
it's so it's, <laughs> yeah. So they what they they talked to Michael Pena there, and then he's like, oh oh, so there's not going to be oxygen on account of the moon uh, vacuum, whatever. Sure, absolutely, baseball yeah. one is coming down, so <laughs> we have to go to the fire department. I know them. I sold them some Lexuses. <laughs> So what we can like get what? This fire truck. We can what get are you talking oxygen about? tanks. <laughs> the best fucking fire truck in all the land. Like just it's just sported out. You mm-hmm. can just, well, it's a big back, guess, back seat for you. Some fire departments you do see they have like other cars with like fire sure. department labeling on them. So I guess it's Aspen. So the the she she fire department sure. with their Lexus. Vehicles. Or I guess he sold them to the individual firefighters. You know, possibly a lot of it's volunteer. So I don't know. But oh, yeah. here, uh, I'll, I'll give you a good deal on this car. Put me on the uh, VIP list for if there's a fire at my house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give me some extra oxygen, if you know what I mean. Well, that's like, <laughs> you know, Michael Pena is like upset. He's like, you know what would look great in your, your Lexus that you're just going to drive like twice a year to a, a burning building and say, hey, you're doing a good job. What you're going to do, you want teriyaki leather interior is what you want. You, you Definitely. Want, you want CD. You want aux cable. You want everything. You want nice, the Bluetooth. Too. You want all of that stuff. Uh, also, uh, uh, all of our uh, fire departments are underwater. Uh, <laughs> it's weird, it's weird that, how that's happening. Well, that means the fire's out, at least, right? Yeah, well, they. Dude, them, uh, I mean, I know they're already in space, but I just am recalling the scene with them trying to explain to Houseman like that he's got to come with them and he's like, Oh, the kids at school said I was too chubby to go into space. Oh. And they, have to, oh, they have to just be constantly reassuring this character. Like, no, Casey, you're a fucking genius. <laughs> you're, it's totally worth it that you're still on this planet, man. Come on. It's not even. It's like you're a real person. It's mm-hmm. OK. It's like I'm like <laughs> it, you, you. You haven't gotten over the kids making fun of you. It's you're in space, motherfucker. The world <laughs> is about it. to end. And what also, the by, fuck by, do you by want? all those kids are dead. They're yes. they died with their father's fucking hand in their mouth from fucking between two pieces of bread. <laughs> yes, they all did that. Or they got vacuumed up to the moon. That's the two options. So Steve, you're saying they had finger sandwiches? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I definitely need more shots of people just randomly sucked up by the moon. Yes. yes. Like, what the fuck? There needs to be more disaster shots. Like, we mentioned Manhattan, and we see, like, L.A. flooding or whatever, but it's just not enough. But well, I mean, that wouldn't the- be like that wouldn't be like Nashville. You know, <laughs> you have to get you got to have some character moments of just, like, hanging out with people. You know, I you would know. like some character moments. You're right. But we don't have them here. No, All no dude, characters. yeah, like fucking you just go to a bar and like Lily Tomlin's like singing at David Carradine and whatnot. Or is it Keith Carradine, maybe? I'm easy. Because I'm easy. <laughs> you know, and like the moon's falling outside, but it's still sexy in this dude, that's where talk. I'd be. That's where I'd be. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Drinking myself to death. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'd be there. Gun in my mouth, ready to go. Wait a second. I'm already <laughs> there. But the <laughs> oh, is the moon falling? All <laughs> Let's of just the- say that tonight I'm going to act like the moon is falling. <laughs> <laughs> Drink like the moon is falling and you'll never <laughs> want for anything. No, but all of these, like, the gravity spills and the oxygen whatevers, it's yeah. just deus ex fucking screenplay. Every yep. single time, yep. it works just enough to get your characters where you need them to be, put them in enough peril to pull it back, and then they're okay. Like, nothing ex- surprising ever happens. You know, no. like, they, uh, with the oxygen, the hillbillies start chasing them, and then, like, they do this super Mario Kart jump onto a mountain and like Wild they're shit. allowed yeah. to do that because mm-hmm. the screenplay says so. But every the hillbillies just blow up. There is like they're, they're gra- bad guys. Gravity bad waves guys. happening. Uh, but yes, absolutely. it doesn't work on bad guys. Yeah, yeah, bad guys don't get the gravity waves. They don't get the they fucking just, power up. Like these dudes make this jump in this beautiful Lexus. Mm-hmm. And then these fucking hillbillies trash their fucking hee-haw mobile into a huge rock because yes. they can't make the jump. And it's a real like, oh, I've wasted my life yeah. like, kind of thing. Oh my I, god, it is sad. It it's it gets annoying. It's also just getting at this point, I'm like, this movie needs to end. Like yes. the script keeps yes ending itself. And I don't <laughs> I don't yep. appreciate it really. And it's just keeps on like I don't care if Michael Pena dies. Does nope. anybody care? No, about that is so dies? useless. Three lines. Like, Who it's cares? Him and his, it's him and his daughter, and he's like, I'm walking with you. Just keep walking. Oh, your oxygen doesn't work. I'll give you mine. Like, cool. I don't care. Who are you? Yeah, more uh, yep. people need to die in this. Definitely. Yes. 
Yeah. Also, it, like you're only a few steps behind. Split it with her. Like yeah. you take a breath, then hold your breath, then <laughs> I'll take a breath, and then hold my breath, and then you take. Like let's, it's just let's it's move insane. our legs a little bit here, folks. Yep. Well, to- it's so stupid. Well, that I mean, then you wouldn't be able. He's really dying to make sure that uh, Harper and the wife can get back together at the end, mm, and that yes. the family can be reunited. Well, that's it's really funny. he has to sacrifice himself. I to- I mean, I totally agree with you, dude. But the movie sort of flubs on that because it ends before there can be any kind of like reconnection. He's actually like, oh yeah, uh, geez, I'm sorry about your dead husband. And like, like, <laughs> yeah, the, the door is open. Sure. But the movie doesn't have them embrace well, or anything like that. No, they don't. And what they do instead of, again, we're getting wait. I mean, we're, well, we're in the middle of the, Whatever, moonfall. the moonfall is happening, but uh, the, the, what they, they have this last seed with Halle Berry and him where they're like, he's just like, looks at her. He's like, we're good partners, right? Like, <laughs> what what do you have to fucking prove that? It's been disaster after disaster, ruined each other's lives it seems like. Why does why are you good partners? And it's just I think just to be like, oh they can't have a romantic thing. Yes. You gotta, they can't kiss each other for whatever don't, reason. Don't do that. Yeah, it would be fine if they 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 make out at the end of this movie, you know, like that'd be something. Well, yeah. I thought that's what was going to happen. Yes. It's like you're divorced, she's fucking divorced. Yeah. Well, why not? It? So like the end of this movie, uh, such as it is. By the way, we should say like while the while uh, Halle while Halle Berry, Patrick Wilson, and Houseman are all inside the fucking moon mega structure, this big dumb AI is Ugh. swarming and slamming on the door like a Looney Tune literal bee swarm. I'm not, yep. You might as well turn into an arrow. You know what yeah. I mean? Or yep. like yep. turn into a finger to lure someone out. You know what I mean? Totally. Like, and you can just hear. Like the old timey Looney Tune music, like the <laughs> boom, boom. Hey, get out of there! <laughs> and it's just like turning into a huge fist. It's so cartoonish. It's so stupid. So, but meanwhile, Patrick Wilson now has all the moon knowledge he got from his son. And moon it, knowledge. <laughs> and the moon has fixed their spaceship and souped it up in some way. There is and a line from uh, Casey at one point. It's like, yes, you. You have all the, you're the key <laughs> yeah. to the moon knowledge. It's like, you have to survive. You know all about the moon. And I'm like, come on. What? I mean, like, you're, you're basically saying that he's going to spend the rest of his life trying to convince people about this fucking nonsense. No, they would man. hang him. No one would believe yep. this yep. dude for a second. Why, why are we even talking about the rest of your life? It's over. Yes, it's true. Everybody, it's over. And, I mean, life yes. as we know, we're over. By the time, this time, like, the moon just looks like the Death Star now because all the crust right. fell off and hit the the Earth. And it's like, yes. what was that to begin with? Did, we, did, did there was people, the ancient aliens construct styrofoam or or, I, or was it like asteroids hitting it throughout the years no i, I think it, when i think when they're making it i think it's like like a shield sort of like um we did that uh tos episode on the nexus a while back where it was a planet a dyson sphere thing yeah uh right. yeah inside or was it a tng it was one one of the do you think shows. it's one of the do you think the moon actually in this universe is not unlike that rock you buy outside or to put outside your house with your keys in it like it's, you know exactly what I mean? it's plastic. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> but That's in this is. case, in Moonfall's case, it's the dog turd version. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I mean, but then, like all, it turns there's like this big spaceship. There's laser turrets, and I'm like, this movie needs to end. It's this, this movie needs honest, to end. There's honest to goodness battle stations inside the moon. Yeah. And the movie doesn't explore that at they all. They thought of everything. See, now, if you got Michael Pena up on the moon, he could walk around and be like, whoa, they got the teriyaki leather seats up here, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, you need some fucking gleep glops to be walking around. Maybe something. it's like f- some robots exactly. or something. Like one robot that's controlling the yes. moon. And maybe it's played by somebody, I would hope. Well, if it's <laughs> an android. Oh, dude, it's a fucking android that looks like Donald Sutherland. Exactly. There you go. Get a Donald Sutherland and Tommy Lee Jones is ordering around him and a David Thewlis robot <laughs> to shoot all of the intruders. Thank you. Just, That's a movie. There, now there we're making a movie. Something. Then we might have some, a face to a villain. That might it's be something. It's just like, I can't believe this whole time. Like, they go into this big thing. There's nobody home. This fucking <laughs> thing's chasing him, but there's nobody really chasing him. Like, 
it's just this for a movie like supposed to be like as big as this, like the moon falling to Earth. There's so little that's actually going yeah. on. Because well, the thing well, is, I'm never going to be afraid of an AI. I'm sorry, no, I'm I, I ex- except for Skynet because it was well directed, well written, or yes. whatever. Yes, <laughs> and but even still, because those robots bad. look like skeletons, they had yes. a real menacing fucking look. Yes. Well, because the 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 weird thing about this movie is that. It, the, the the problem isn't really the moon fall. The AI is the bad thing. Like yeah. the, the moon fall is just like a, a victim of the AI thing. So the AI thing is the thing that is really at the problem. Don't so you like, blame the moon? It was the AI the whole see, time. That's exactly what I'm just like. It's so like uh, if the moon is falling into Earth, it should be about the moon. Yes. And like that should be it. <sighs> well, I think it's just because like. They are trying, you know, clearly as I was, I was, you know, fooled by it just as much as anybody. Like sure. they wanted to keep all of this stuff a surprise. Yes. Oh, but you when, know, when, when Patrick Wilson gets like sprayed by the moon and he has that seizure <laughs> and he talks to his son who it seems like he's dead, but he's not. It's just yeah, the, right. Right, right. he then comes out of it and he's just like, we wait, wait a second. We must save the moon. Absolutely. The moon <laughs> yeah. is our best fucking friend. And it's just so funny to go from fuck the moon for so long to suddenly in the last 20, 15 minutes to be like, we are saving this moon. Save a, yep. moon. a last minute moon hero turn is what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I don't like I don't care for it either. I don't like it. We're Keep the moon a bad guy. <laughs> but then uh because uh uh Roland Emmerich had Armageddon on when he was watching this, uh, when he was writing this. <laughs> They, you know, it's like Patrick Wilson's like, I'm going to stay behind because it needs some sort of biological thing to set to to draw it in. And I'm going to blow up and die. And that's just because the moon told me to do it. I got to do it. Listen, the moon, that's what the moon told me. I got to It's It's got to be me. And I'm the the funny thing. The moon told me that I'm the perfect candidate for this. Because when it asked me if I would sacrifice my own life for my son, would I do it? And I said, yes. And so the moon is just like, okay, cool. We just wanted to make sure you would definitely go through with that. <laughs> so just imagine that the 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 moon is kind of like your son in this case, if you think about it in a way. But like, it's just the fact that he's like, uh, of course, it's just he's the big hero. It's yeah. his Harper. He's the big hero. And I would be so fucking furious if I'm the hero and I've made peace with the fact I'm dying here. And this fat turd <laughs> runs into the back and fucking seals himself in the bomb chamber and mm. takes my fucking steel. I would like be like I would I would rip that thing up and be like no you're dying now no because it al- <laughs> and also like I don't want to go back to what to eating I don't know fucking dirt for the next four years before I just eventually die of malnourishment <laughs> there's nothing on that earth listening to Starbucks compilation CDs while I work on my car like <laughs> like really that's what you want to do with your I life. thought you meant Starbuck from uh, Battlestar for a second because some of these oh. effects that's the level it is Very which I love so. that yeah, show that's true but that's the level it is but that was a show on it's a TV. small TV exactly. station <laughs> TV gets away with it but yeah he's like oh I'm just I'm gonna be the hero if you don't mind Mr. Harper you've got to go back to your children and I'm just a sad old lonely fucker with a cat as my mama Chicken. used to say, it's better to beg for forgiveness than to whatever. Ask for permission. permission. <laughs> yeah, dude. And then he's like, they are trying to give you all of these lines that slobs like me. If I saw it in the theater, maybe it would have got a little bit of emotion. But mm. he's like, check in on me, mom. Tell her that her son wasn't a failure. Yeah. Uh, like, tell not her- doing oh, oh, she's got nah, Alzheimer's, nah, kid. Gonna- so she doesn't know what the fuck I just said. Oh, well, actually, she got sucked up into the moon. She's right there, actually. See that see that wheelchair? Yeah. That was where your mother was. Ooh, the moon already turned her into spaghetti. Sorry. <laughs> your, your, be, your new best bud, the moon, already sucked her up. Yeah, yeah. Your fucking and mom's her out. bolognese sauce. Yeah. Your mom had split pea soup with rat poison in it about an hour after she found out about the moon wobble. <laughs> yeah. You're the key to our moon's knowledge. <laughs> That's right, Brian. <laughs> yes, you need to go and preach moon to people. <laughs> we need more moonies <laughs> and moonanites. Yes, you, get married in mass. <laughs> you get the fuck out of there, pudgy. That's my fucking bomb to hug. No, and but like, he goes you know, and he, yeah. Here's my question, though, about all this. is like, I know, you know, this guy always wanted to be an astronaut. Love space, all that stuff. But he works at Burger King. 
Mm-hmm. Like, you're telling me this guy knows all the little flips to switch and whatnot? Mm-hmm. He's just that good. He's been there's switches to flips, rather. You know what yeah. I mean? Like he read the internet. Mm-hmm. He would do uh, anything. Just uh, like you, you could be in. You could die in space, <laughs> listeners. Yes. You, all of you could put off. You could all arm and take off a bomb in space. Of you course, you just have to listen. Too is like you are. Everyone listening to this will die in space because Earth. Remember, mm-hmm. it's in space. Mm-hmm. The more you know, that's true, dude. It's true, yeah. The more you know, definitely, dude. Chris. Yes, there you go. Mortality. <laughs> he gets uh so he gets swallowed by this fucking thing. And then like a, a like an AI head starts like building inside the spaceship. So he has something to look at when he says, You underestimated us. <laughs> and then lets this EMP go. For Elon, retweet me. <laughs> oh, what's that? Is there no consequences whatsoever? And I'm alive again as part of the AI? Mm-hmm. Dude, this is the reason why I wanted. So, like, they go back. They they zip down. Uh, they just make it or whatever. And it's they- actually kind of a cool thing that the way that they're able to survive because, like, the shuttle gets fucking destroyed. They're yeah. only in the little capsule, and the way that they're able to really scoot to safety kind of easily is because the moon is like in the Earth's atmosphere, <laughs> yes. right? It's- like, so. Th- they're just be a- basically to be able to like push themselves towards Earth, and then she immediately opens the parachutes, and they land like totally fucked. That was hilarious. Thank you for pointing that out, Andrew. Because I re- I was watching it, and I was like, oh my god, oh right, they're basically on Earth already. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's I I thought they were gonna have to do like a base jump from the moon onto Earth. Like I th- oh. I thought they were gonna get really crazy. Chris would have to hire a stunt performer for that. Oh yeah, I guess that's no good. <laughs> yeah, you can't just put someone in front of a TV and have that happen. No, but- a little cartoon doing it wouldn't be the same. Somewhere, somehow, there is an American government that has helicopter pilots that's looking for these people. Of course. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Everyone is dead. All the Everyone's birds are dead. dead. No, no, oh, yeah, you're right. The birds are fucking dead. Like everything is dead. It's all dead. Everything that was flying is dead. All those airplanes that were still in the air for some reason yes. have all crashed to the ground. That's true. Like the next like spring and shit, there's not gonna be like bees or anything left to like no. make the nope. anything well, happen. Wouldn't those airplane people actually be totally fine? Because they have like a fake uh, air supply up there. So well, the thing is gonna be ripped the, apart, isn't well, it? Well, I guess if something <laughs> fell on, they would have got yeah. bumped by the moon, dude. But the moon guess what? Just bumped them. The moon is slowly going back to where it belongs. Oh, thank God! Oh yeah, rascal! Come on, <laughs> get back up yeah. there! <laughs> Come on, <laughs> moon, you, you troublemaker! That's what you are. <laughs> wow, moon. a troublemaker! <laughs> Ridiculous! Moon, I love I, you, uh, moon. I tried to lash on the moon and bring it down for you. <laughs> But I killed the thousands and thousands of people. Oh, Mary, <laughs> the AI got me. <laughs> I'm part of the moon now. <laughs> oh, Mary, my consciousness is inside the AI. That would be <laughs> something. It knows all my deepest, darkest secrets. It knows about how Mr. Gower used to hit my my <laughs> my ears. I was gonna I was gonna stay up there, Mary, but then Spencer Tracy beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> Spencer Tracy's fucking the moon. Yeah, the AI knows what I did to old Mr. Gower there, Mary. Now the, the AI is going to find his body. <laughs> oh, I wish I didn't put a lasso around the moon. Now I know all, all these dark secrets. Oh. <laughs> Our bank's going to be out of business. The AI is going to take care of all the money now. Well, it seems hard to care about Bedford Falls when I know about the ancient aliens. <laughs> oh, do me a favor. Uh, check in on my mom. Tell her that her son wasn't a failure. <laughs> I can't lie to her. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, your money's not here. It's in the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Old savings and loan. <laughs> Merry Christmas, falling moon. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, Michael Pena Lexus. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Charlotte Gainsbourg. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, Kiefer Sutherland. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Kirsten Dunst. <laughs> oh, whatever. But no, Woo. so like this, this helicopter. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Alexander and Stellan Scarsberg. <laughs> flies them back to their families, and the Chrysler yes. building is there, and it's like, 
well, I guess we got a lot of work to do on this new society, which uh, sounds pretty terrible. I, I would have. Oh yeah. I Donald Sutherland had the right idea, dude. Oh, oh, wasn't the Chrysler Building in New York? Oh, as there's whatever. like corpses falling out of it. Exactly. <laughs> LOL, dude. <laughs> And yeah, real, real funny. The reason I wanted to do this movie so badly because I think this scene is the is right now in the in the new. You know, you want to tell me about the you know the first hundred years of cinema, uh, but in this new hundred years of cinema, this is the best sequel t- teaser that'll never happen. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah, I, yeah, I think yeah. I think this is top. I think this is top dog. I think it is. It's he he wakes up. He's reconstituted. His mother and his cat are there, and they're like. We, you are now part of the moon. Mm-hmm. Welcome, welcome to the moon. They You're part of it. Scan yeah. the consciousness of you uh, so you can live forever, transcendent yeah. style as part of the moon. And we've got a lot of work to do. Let's get started. And he goes, started on what? No, oh, end yeah. credit. Uh-huh. Yeah, started so on what? He's just Nothing. Make, making the tides happen forever. <laughs> yeah, that might as well be the end of like the Florida project. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> We're not coming back here. What are you talking we're, about? We're getting in the moon and we're breaking into Disney World. <laughs> It'd be great if uh, actually you just saw him and it was him and like a big, like not unlike Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. It's him swimming around a bunch of brie. Like it was old cheese. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> like Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> I mean, because like that's literally any like you could just slap that on any movie now. If that mm-hmm. if that if you're gonna do it to this movie that yes. made no money, mm-hmm. you fucking you throw it on anywhere you like now. Oh, dude, you let's get started. Let's the, get started, Chris. Oh, that should have been the last line to Crimes of the Future. <laughs> 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 I love that Donald Sutherland gets the fucking hammer in this movie with less than two minutes of screen time. It's insane. Of that's incredible. And also what's incredible, because uh, I did, I just, I wasn't uh, carefully looking at them or anything, but I just was, picked up the laptop uh, when the credits started rolling and I just let the credits go. Um, and there is a moment where it looks like they are about, like the credit, the people who made the credit roll were like instructed, okay, leave space for a stinger scene to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then yes. we don't know yet whether or not we're going to do a stinger scene because there's part of the, the the credits where like they get done with it, the music stops at a very dramatic kind of like brown sort of thing. Yeah, there's no image on the screen, no text, no you know drawings or anything like that. And I was like, oh man, here comes a stinger scene, especially with that fucking sequel setup. Right. And then the rest of the credits just start going. <laughs> so I think like they thought maybe we would have a stinger right. scene, and then just didn't bother. And there's just this huge gap in the in the credits it. left of the movie. It. It's yeah, amazing. It's Michael Pena's left in the snow and <laughs> this shambling character comes up fully like full of like all kinds of shit on him that you can't really tell who it is. And then he just lifts up his flaps and gives him like air and he's like, thank you. Thank you. How can I ever thank you? He turns off it's Donald Sutherland. Mm. <laughs> oh he yeah. actually he actually survived the shot and he says the shot to the face let me ask you something son have you heard of mars <laughs> <laughs> end of movie because it could also <laughs> fall mars can also fall you know or it's- yeah i mean you can have a whole wobble verse here <laughs> yes <laughs> absolutely wobble verse <laughs> venus fall i can't wait mm-hmm yeah, totally. I mean, Neptune Falls, that sounds like a small, quaint town somewhere. Right. That, sound, that, that sounds kind of nice. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, so that's Moonfall, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we'll go around the horn here. Would anybody recommend this 2022 disaster, uh, Steve Sadak? I kind of would. It's a light recommend to me. It's so bad. It's just worth watching once. It's so bizarre. Mm. Uh, the effects are terrible. Uh, there is no, not even effects, but like again, like he did not ever conceptualize what a moonfall looked like, and you, <laughs> the, you, the viewer, never figure it out. Yeah, we're just going to wing it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for all of that, I just think it's such an ill-conceived, bonkers, cheesy, <laughs> shitty B movie that it's worth watching once. That's me. Totally. Uh, Chris Cabin. Nope. Too long. <laughs> uh, I also am a little tired of us trying to make uh, 
Game of Thrones uh, yep. uh, actors into uh, yep. real actors. Well, Chris, this, yeah. Yeah, this he's, needs to he's stop. here because Josh Gad dropped out at the last second. Oh, of course. Oh, well, I will say, okay, you know what? <laughs> to this guy's credit, I would prefer him to Josh Thank Gad. Thank you, Trudeau. Josh Gad, Josh Gad would absolutely ruin this movie. Like, and any little thing I enjoy about it would be completely gone if Gad was here. <laughs> There'd be so many gags of him screaming. Yep. No, I can't deal with that. No, and like, yeah, like. I like Patrick Wilson. I like the cast enough, but like just not enough. It's it's, it's bad. Uh, Eric Sisko. Yeah, um, I I think John Bradley is good on Game of Thrones. I don't think it's really he's not good here. I do like the cast in general, but nothing coalesces. Nothing really happens here. Roland Emmerich passed his prime, unfortunately. I wish no. I could recommend it, but like Chris says too long two hours and 10 minutes for this piece of shit are you kidding this should be an hour and 40 minutes that's totally yes, fair absolutely yeah no i'm not really disagreeing with anybody here um but i will say it's a light recommend it's kind of a seeing is believing it's kind of the most recent like wow that was dumb mm-hmm. you know like the credits started and i was like holy shit that was stupid <laughs> so it, it it sort of for me at least was sliding into that you know territory of like a so bad so bad it's good kind of a situation um i will say the guy who plays the kid it's a thankless role this actor charlie Plummer, who i think is actually pretty good and he's in um a couple of good movies like he's in that all the money in the world the ridley scott movie mm. he's spontaneous the- uh weird horror movie worth seeing yeah, Lean on Pete, a devastatingly sad movie, uh, but he's very good in it. So, like, yeah, he doesn't get a lot of play here, and all the shit that they have him say is actually pretty stupid. His role is thankless and stupid. Uh, as is fucking Kelly Yu, all of that. Get the fucking people out of there. That's my thing. Give me the fucking <laughs> military people, the science people, and then leave it at that. Gleep glops, if you please. You, you um, know what? Arrival understood that. Why can't you? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. And if a rival's doing better than you, you got to fucking do better. Uh, so that is Moonfall, directed by Roland Emmerich, one of the worst of last year's films. Uh, for more We Hate Movies, of course, check out patreon.com slash we hate movies, uh, where this month's WLM will be on a film that is one of the best of the year. Do we have that settled at the time we, of recording? We do. I think we do. Yeah. It is Top Gun Maverick, which at this Boom. time of this recording, I have not seen yet, but I'll, I'll take Christ. your word for it. The one person, the one person <laughs> in, the in world, America. In the we found world. him. It's, I will see re- found very him. Exciting. Steve, they're re-releasing it in theaters. I think it might be worth checking it out on the big Steve, screen. I think I, I think I will. Steve, you, you saw Moonfall in theaters. <laughs> yep. mm-hmm. You made sure to get the big screen experience with that one. But then with Top Gun Maverick, you're going to sit your ass on the couch uh, you know, on like what, what the little like uh, a laptop screen for you know uh, why one? Chris you know why Chris like <laughs> you could just say oh yeah sure. it's, it's a bad movie podcast I live this shit okay I, I live <laughs> this shit <laughs> okay that's true Steve you do indeed uh, walk the walk my friend so three, uh, three out of four of us liked <laughs> Top Gun Maverick and we'll be talking yes. about it on Patreon yes <laughs> patreon.com uh, slash we hate movies where we have a lot more to offer you this month in addition Abs- to. Absolutely. Such as? Uh, it, it, so we will have a new episode of The Nexus, our Star Trek recap show, of course. Uh, who we do it on the Gleep Glossary? On the Gleep Glossary, we'll be talking about Mon Mothma, and this will Ooh. also... will. <laughs> you don't have to tell me twice with that. Oh, my Lord. But... <laughs> We'll talk about Andor as well, encapsulated yeah. into that Gleep Glossary episode. If you don't know, we've recapped every episode of The Mandalorian, every episode of The Book of Boba Fett, every episode of Obi-Wan, and we kind of had enough, and we didn't go to Andor, and Andor was the best one of them. Yeah. yeah. Yep, boy. So Huge mistake. Boy is our face Huge red. Mistake. We will be talking yeah. about Andor a little bit during that Mon Mothma episode. Kind of fits into the best of worst of, of the year, so yep. it works out nicely. And yeah. uh, just we just released it, our Harry Potter and the uh, Chamber of Secrets Terry, which is available now for all patrons. It's a real blast, so you want to definitely get on that guy. Definitely long movie, so it's a good, it's a good long time of hanging out with us. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. We also did the first movie as well, and if you unlock, you know, if you sub- sign up for our Patreon, you unlock, you know, everything of that that level through the past, so you get. Multiple commentaries, multiple Gleep Glossaries, multiple Nexuses. 
Mm-hmm. And the good thing is, man, because the moon's falling and time is speeding up, you'll be able to get into the past faster and get those episodes. Definitely. Mm-hmm. I think uh, is the idea yes. there. Now, uh, we are, of course, just getting started here uh, on the main feed with uh, some of the worst of last year's offerings. And like we said, <clears throat> boy, uh, the wh- whatever the opposite of slim pickings is, uh, <laughs> b- embarrassment of riches. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, Steve Sadak, what is going on uh, the main feed here next week? Uh, the moon is still fallen, but it's full of dinosaurs, it seems. <laughs> it is uh, <laughs> Jurassic Park fall. Dominion? Was yes. it Dominion? It was Dominion. Okay. Jurassic Dom- World. Uh, Jurassic World Dominion. Dominion Apologies. Yes. That's Dominion. Dominion. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Uh, it's a movie that I uh, 100% uh, did not see in theaters, but did the $20 rental at home. Ooh. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm stinks. like a double time loser. Like I paid <laughs> way more than I should have, and I didn't leave the house. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about some really bad CGI dinosaurs next week. Some Chris Pratt fucking dino training and whatnot. Ooh. It is a really... Oh, and the bugs. Oh, we can't forget the bugs. Of course, too. the bugs. Man, it is so, yeah, remember the huh, bugs. It is, it is such a stupid movie. All right. Uh, until next week with Jurassic World colon Dominion. I'm Andrew Jupin. Steven Sadak. Eric Siska. Chris Cabin. Take it easy. That was a HeadGum Podcast.